Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I don't know what happened to Gareth. He was oh. a second ago. <laughs> Sorry. I just realized like I, <laughs> I realized I left water on and I thought, oh God, no, I can't do that and start the show and then have to run through. Sure. Yeah, simple? I was like, that was such a <laughs> an act. I was like, wait, where's Gareth? <laughs> You're like, right, this guy's completely lost his mind. He's now finally gone <laughs> insane. <laughs> I was like, I just saw him a second ago. Like, where is Gareth? Well, you know when you you know when you think you've done something and you get there and you didn't. So I like I run all the way to the bathroom. I'm like, oh god, I left the tap on, or and I get there, the tap's not on. So yes, <laughs> thank God it's Friday. What a week! Wow. Yeah. All right. Uh, Simpia was complaining earlier, and she's right to complain. It's not bad enough that it's cold now. Um, you know the the. <laughs> The weather gods have decided to add a bit of wind to make it even worse. Yo. Yes, nasty. Pick one. No, no Pick other way one. to put it. The, you no. can't have it all. We we cannot. Uh. It's already cold. It's winter. It's dark. We can't have wind as well. Like pick one. Pick one. As I believe, please. No. Nah. Yeah. Yeah, no, listen. <laughs> this is not the this is not the sort of stuff that you want to have um around you going on all the day and all of the night. And I hope that this weekend isn't gonna to be too cold because like I said, we're doing my dad's birthday party and I think um people are gonna freeze and you know, there's nothing worse than old people freezing. Hey, it's so cold. <laughs> so yeah. They're the first ones to complain. And they're oh gonna my be God. like, mm -mm. You know, I think we should just wrap this up. It's just so cold. And you're like, um, mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. that bad. Mm -hmm. They're like, mm -mm. it's very, very cold. And you're like, well, there's a blanket for you. There's a hot water yeah. bottle. There's the heater. They're like, mm -mm. it's still cold. It's still very, very cold. And you're like, yo, hey, son. <laughs> well, um, Max Sony says, I'd love to hear what the GCS has to say about that uh, retarded EFF representative yesterday. You know what? Um, I didn't think she was retarded, first of all. And I also didn't think she was nasty. I didn't think she was like a horrible politician, typical. I thought she was quite sweet. And, you know, you don't invite people to your house, which is essentially what we do when we do a show. And then, and then uh, start punching them in the face. So I don't know how you guys behave when you have guests. But if that's what you do, I'm not coming to visit you anytime soon. Now, that's not to say that we don't give them a hard time. And, you know, Pumi can be the hardest of all of us. Oh, when it comes yes. to you know, when it comes to dealing with like people, uh, you will not you will not forget easily how she treated um, uh, the the one guy who was from what's that party of of uh, Gaten McKenzie's? I can't even remember what, what what they called, but there was one guy from there who was he, he was thoroughly lambasted by Pumi the whole way through the show. Um, we also have have we've treated everybody as equals. So Herman Mashaba, when he was mayor of Johannesburg got a really tough time and then when he wasn't mayor anymore he got just as tough a time so you know it's not like we stand on ceremony or we try to make things easy for people but you don't have to be rude um and i don't think anybody wants to invite someone onto the show and be rude to them so i didn't find her retarded and i didn't find her extremely irritating i mean we had a good argument about a couple of things but also you know if we're going to have them again which is kind of what the plan is so that we can talk to these people from various parties, um, then we've got, to, we've got to first develop some sort of rapport with them. Um, it's almost like a like a first date, Mac. And I don't mean that we must be so nice and sugary that we make it easy for people. And, you know, they come because it's just a big party and everybody gets along. But I do think that, you know, there are things that we need to explore. And you can't explore all of those in just one second. Uh, it was the Patriotic Alliance. Thank you, Ryan. A guy called Ashley. That's right. Correct. 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 Yeah. I couldn't remember, couldn't remember the guy's there name. There is a cacophony of jabberings at that corner. Please come to silence. A cacophony of jabberings. All right. <laughs> um, the weekend is upon us. So what are you doing this weekend? Let us know what you're up to. Uh, Simpiwa, we haven't had an update on whether or not you have a social life at the moment. What's going on with you for ages? <laughs> come on. All the beans. We so, go straight into the news and stuff. Tell me. Yeah. So you remember last week, I was like, Gareth, all I want is cuddles. Like, that's all I'm asking for. That's all I really want yep. in this life. Thing. I can ask and you shall receive, you know? And so 
I'm I'm very much, you know, looking forward to just getting some cuddles this weekend. I think that's just um you know, something really nice. And now that I've learned that if you ask, you shall get. I, I'm also this week. Uh, what uh, have you I'm received? Asking... <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. That sounds fantastic. I know, right? So um, I'm just going to be like, you know, on this bag wagon of asking. Um, if you'd like to send me money, that's okay, guys. Like, I accept e-wallets, you know, cash send. I can send you my bank account details. Um yeah. Rand dollars, dollars, the pound. I will, I will take right. it all. You know, ask and you shall receive. <laughs> so Man. yeah, that's all I'm gonna get up to this weekend. Just hang out with some friends and you know nice. some cuddles somewhere <laughs> in the mix. That sounds uh, pretty good, actually. You know, it's a, like a no pressure weekend. Yes. You, know, you don't um, want to. You don't have to so many things. Also, I mean, listen. I hate to keep bringing this up, but I mean, it's not like there's tons of money floating around. It's not like people are going, oh, well, you know, like whoever it was that spent an absolute fortune on booze at that Kofi in Pretoria. We were talking this, about this with Pumi yesterday and, in fact, with Lebang and Ryan on Wednesday as well. You know, those are the very rare people in this country, and most of them have stolen that money. So I don't think most of us can do that. I mean, certainly, I, I don't know any. I don't know anyone who's ever spent that on just booze in one night. Um, so I think it would be the average South African. I spoke to a friend of mine the other night who owns bars and restaurants and things like that. He said to me, the average spend of people mm -hmm. in one of his establishments in one of the establishments, which is like the most kind of middle of the road, but it's quite a successful place. Average spend. Guess what? What people will spend in a night? The whole night. Okay. The whole night, I a patron. Um, I, yeah, well, I'm I'm judging this on like one of the craziest nights I've had with friends. So let's say the average person, maybe at most three k. Like, yeah. In people, the average spend in this place. Obviously, there are some people who bring that up, and some people who don't spend at all. Mm -hmm. um, but the average spend, he says, was between two hundred and fifty and three hundred rand. What? That's Nothing, right? That's nothing. If you consider what drinks cost and all of that stuff. That's a meal. That's actually just one meal. That's not drinks right. <laughs> uh, well, so or dessert. Is, that's just this one is, steak. No, no, this is at the bar. So this is not um, okay. Not for, not for food. So, I mean, the, it, just your drinks bill, 250 to 300 rand. I mean, that's like, you know, what, three, four drinks if you're really, really spendthrift and you're buying the cheap stuff and, you know. So, people are so not spending. They, no, well, they, it's not that they're not spending. They don't have money, which that I thought true. was a very interesting point because you know we we often wonder like, oof, I'm I'm really having a tough time financially or whatever. And then you hear what the average South African is doing, and remember, these are the people who can afford to go out in the first place. Okay, these are not people who are sitting at home like being miserly counting their pennies. 250 to 300 rand a person for the whole night. Scary. But Very you know crazy. what's also scary is like every time now we kind of get like um, uh, information that we're going to hear or there's like speculations that the interest rate might go up or the repo rate goes up and you're mm. just like pinching your left butt cheek and then like yeah. just to find out that this time around, ladies and gentlemen, it didn't go up and we're like, whoo. Okay. Well, yeah. okay. So let's just, month. Uh, tell people because <laughs> after you brought that up, people instantly are like, "Oh, oh shit! What did Simpu? No." So the interest rate was kept the same. Yes. The Reserve Bank decided to keep the repo rate the same, um, which is very good news for anybody who owes any money at all, because that would put a lot of people in a seriously bad position. So at least there's that little bit of good news. Yeah, I was pinching my left butt cheek when I saw. Like the headline, I was like, oh no, oh no, this is, come August, I'm going to have to pay even more money for my car. And then I was like, oh, okay, I can survive August. <laughs> I'm surviving August, I don't know about the rest. <laughs> it's like a month to month, uh, ooh, let's see what's going on. Yeah. So Sanele still has a problem with uh, us being too nice to the EFF yesterday. Uh, Sanele says, I'm sorry, but I don't agree. There is no establishing rapport for EDSC. The person the EFF sent yesterday was worse than drying paint. She had nothing to offer to the conversation. Okay, so look, 
Um, when we do the burning platform, we want to get representatives from as many political backgrounds as we can. I don't get to choose who they send and neither do the producers. We don't get to say, well, if you don't send Julius, we just won't do the interview. And we could probably get him if we tried as well. But it's also nice to see who the, who the, this woman is in the central, what they call the central command team. Okay. I don't know what that is, but it sounds like the NEC, the ANC with, a, with, with EFF littering. That's what it sounds like. So this is not a person who is just a kind of newly recruited foot soldier, to put it in EFF terms. This is someone who's been in the EFF from day one. So if she can't express what the EFF stand for, that tells you something about the EFF. So instead of us going, and again, I don't want to be uncharitable and invite people on the show and then like when they're not there, say, oh, well, they were, they were stupid or whatever. But if you take her at her word, which I always prefer to do, like if somebody says, this is how I feel about something or this is what I think, believe them. I mean, unless they are, unless they prove themselves to be completely deceitful, which I did not get the impression our guest yesterday in Togoza was, then take her at her word. And if that is her word, then understand that is what the EFF stand for. Then you know you're dealing with a party. See, this is where we get confused. Like people go, oh, well, Jacob Zuma was an evil person, but the ANC is good. Well, it turns out that's not entirely true, right? It turns out it wasn't just one man who was the bad apple and everybody else in the ANC is just great. It, that is it true. actually turns, turns out the whole ANC is just based on some very bad philosophies and that those philosophies then end up manifesting themselves in various ways that you can judge. These are the kind of people I want. This is the kind of organization that I want. These are the sort of values that I want to represent me in parliament and in government. And if Dogozo yesterday is from the EFF and that what she says is what the EFF believe, and I have no reason to believe that she misinterpreted the EFF's policies, then you know what the EFF are about. So you've learned something from yesterday. So to then sit here, to then sit here and go, oh well, you guys should have been more mean to her, or you should have uh, dragged her across the coals more, and all of that stuff. You know what? I'm not Deborah Patter, and I don't want to make it a habit of making people um, answer questions and start firing things at them and become uh, unpleasant to be around. I mean, I've already got a reputation which I don't deserve for being controversial about everything. You guys who listen to the show know there are plenty of things that I'm not controversial about. You know this, Simpy, right? Mm -hmm. So now, what, you want me to add to that? And I must say the things that you want to... Well, why don't you just send your questions in and I'll put them to her next time. But you got to ask questions. You can't just go, oh, you're a fucking moron and then chase someone out of the studio. Because if you do that, your show is going to last five episodes and then you're out of business. So again, I'm really not trying to fight with you guys. I know that... When someone comes in, and I probably agree with you on some of the things that she said. I mean, you could tell from my face, you could tell from Pumi, you could tell from the argument I had even with Mighty Jamie, which we have often, and I don't think he's an idiot. But there are things that I'm very, very vocal about. It doesn't mean that we have to turn the interview into a shouting match just because they do that on Fox News and MSNBC in America. So I'm not going to carry on talking about this. If you don't like the way I do things, then listen to something else. That's it. We got two options here. Listen or don't. Just like I have two options. Uh, try to make interesting stuff or make stuff that only I care about. Can you imagine if I only did stuff I care about? How boring would the show be? Yeah. All right. So we got Ben joining us in a little while. Um, we've also got to talk about some of the stories that are in the news. But I think what's quite interesting is Simpiwe found out about something called the Google effect. Now we know about the Mandela effect. It's where people think that they've they, they remember a story, but they don't actually remember the details or the truth of the story. They remember a version of the story that their memory mm -hmm. tells them or the told them, and it's not always correct. And then it somehow gets calcified into your memory as truth. And then mm -hmm. you go around spreading it, and it makes it even worse. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's, got no, it's got no bearing on the truth at all. We all know people who walk around going, in fact, yesterday I said this to the EFF person. I said, you know, it's it's just not true that the state doesn't own most of the land in the country. And she was like, no, 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 it's true. And I'm like, prove it. And she's like, 
No, it's just true. That's the Mandela effect. She, she's been told this enough times and mm. she has no proof that that's the case. So again, for the rest of us, you have to have evidence of this. Otherwise, what kind of argument are you going to mount? Um, mm -hmm. So what is, the, what is the Google effect? So the Google effect is basically digital amnesia. So this is basically when your brain does not um, remember things that you can simply look up on Google. Right. So um, we as humans over time, if someone like said their phone number and you saved it on your phone, your brain's not going to even try remember it because it knows right. that it can pick up your phone and search for right. it. And, and this is the reason why so many people um, don't remember directions or they forget like a simple math equation because you can simply um, Google that. You can simply go and pick up a device. And also this has also attributed, well, it's, it's, it's also made people not spell correctly. So because of autocorrect, people don't learn how to spell anymore because they know they can pick yeah. up any device. And then as they're putting DEF, it will finish off and say definitely. And um, so people now don't know how to spell because Google does it for us or <laughs> a smart device does well, it for us. And that's basically the Google effect that... Okay is taking place so i have that happen to me all the time uh just to prove <laughs> that just to prove that i'm as stupid as everybody else when this stuff happens because i always go oh we're so dependent on our phones but i am too if i don't put a meeting in my diary forget about it like people yeah. it doesn't happen often thank goodness but like in the last two or three years it's maybe happened twice and it's so embarrassing when it does someone pitches up at the office and you're sitting in your office and you, you're like ready for, I don't know, a staff meeting or you've got a, an, an, an online video call. You're replying to emails or whatever. Someone pitches up and they're, hello. And you go, oh, uh, hi. And you don't remember who it was or any of that shit because you forgot to put it in your diary. And then they're like, we have a, a 10 o'clock. And you go, uh, oh, oh, hi. Hi. How are you? I mean, at least, at least in that case, I was at the office the other time. Someone pitched up at the office for a meeting with me and I wasn't even there, you know, and then, and then <laughs> I get a call from, I think it was Dory or Reno or one of them. And they're like, where are you? So I go, well, I wasn't coming in today because I've got things to do that I don't need to be in the office. <laughs> like, no, you do. Cause there's someone here for you. And you're like, Oh Jesus. So is that the Google effect as well? Yeah, I think so. So I, I've seen it with me when I have to drive somewhere and I've been to a place like 40,000 times. And then sometimes I just forget. I'm like, eh, do I turn left or do I turn oh right? God. And then I quickly mm. go to my phone and put it in the address and I'm like, oh, okay. No, no, it's, it's, it's left. And, and, and that is like so interesting. Um, they also shared here like 82% of parents don't actually know um, their children's phone number off by heart. And it's like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. There's certain yeah. things I feel like we still need to like just, you know, engrave in our like memories. And we're like, why are we not learning numbers anymore? Like why people's phone numbers? Because your phone dies. And then what happens? Who do you call? Well, I mean, um, it's interesting. George kind of summarizes it very well. He says it's like using Google as an external hard drive. Uh, it's more space for other stuff. So I think that's true because... I think we were even saying yesterday. Um, no, no, sorry, it wasn't on uh, with on the show with Pumi. It was actually at uh, my my dad's birthday dinner the other night. My brother said he could still remember our phone number from when we were at primary school. Uh, our parents' phone number, and I don't know how many numbers you can recall offhand now, but you don't need to, right? I can probably remember three or four, all yeah. of them family, and that's it. That's probably all I'm I'm good at. You know, that and, and my business partners, because I often give people her number. But other than that, I can't remember anyone else's number. I can't even remember a single digit of most people's numbers. Oh, yeah. So the only numbers I do know off by heart is mine. And sadly, like a Yo TV number um, when I was still in high school, <laughs> back in those days when you had to like call uh, using the landline. And I think it's like 082. What? Oh, I forgot it now. But th those are the only two numbers that I actually know. <laughs> no. no. I mean, Graham says the same thing. He says, like predictive text, I have to double check my spelling all the time when writing documents. Listen, I, you know what word always screws me up is necessary. I'm always oh, like, yeah. two okay. T's or two S's. And then luckily, you know, spell check and, and 
various other useful apps kick into. <laughs> into yeah, your... the, but those those predictive texts have also gotten us into trouble. Like I'm just like, mm, <laughs> I wasn't going for that word, but uh, <laughs> we're here now. And because I type so fast, I only like uh, read my sentence after I've sent the message. And I'm like, oh, shucks. No, that's not what I meant. Um, sorry. <laughs> So, yeah. So, okay, then uh, I do see this. This is an interesting thing, and let's just absolutely get this right um, because parallel parking's correcting me here, and I'm often wrong. So, he says, or she says, I can't remember. Is parallel parking a guy or a girl? I can't remember. Anyway, you may want to look into the Mandela effect. It's not about mismemory. Mandela effects are, for the most part, verifiable by doing actual archival research. Um, so, I've, I've got the, the definition here. It says um, the Mandela effect was dubbed that by the paranormal researcher Fiona Broom, who reported having vivid and detailed memories of news coverage of South African anti-apartheid leader Nelson Mandela dying in prison in the 80s, despite Mandela actually dying 2013, decades after his release and after serving as president. So it's like false memory. So you okay. actually have, it's not a mismemory, it's a false memory. So that's useful. Thank you very much for clearing that up. It's a much better thing to have a good definition. Um, Donna says it's just called having a senior moment. I don't know, man. I mean, I, I know young people. Simpiwe is not a senior moment. Like, Simpiwe is young. Yes. You can't blame <laughs> old age. And it happens to her as well, right? All the time. It's it's just one of those things where you realize that you, you're either on your phone or your laptop all the time and you use it that much. I Like, until I read about this, like, Google thing, I didn't think much of it. I was like, yeah, like, I don't, why do I need to remember your phone number if it's saved on my phone? And it's like, why do I need to? No, I can just Google. Uh, I don't know how to uh, Google. <laughs> so it's amazing. So, so I mean, listen. If, for example, if you had to do a trade off, and George is right, like your your memory, your your actual, it's not even your hard drive. It's your RAM, your random access memory, the memory that you knew you need to be able to do the programs that your brain has to has to compute on a daily basis. How to speak, uh, what how to go through your your list of to dos. Um, how to run a meeting, um, how to do business, um, how to put documents together, all the things that you might maybe required to do for work, how to implement your skill in a meaningful way. All of that stuff requires the RAM, the random access memory. And the more of that you can free up or that you can dedicate to one single task, the better you will do that one single task. Everybody says they're multitaskers, but actually they've, they've proven that's not entirely true. Like your the quality of your work if you're multitasking across those various things is diminished. If you mm-hmm. do one thing and you can focus on one thing and you're not distracted, you will in, invariably do it better. I mean, it sounds so obvious, but they've now got the research to back it up. And Max Sony says, just to prove the point, I mean, I can rattle off my ID number very easily, right? I know that. I've never had to check that in my in my ID before. But if you ask me for a number which I use much less, like let's say my passport number or even my account number, my yeah. bank account number, which, I mean, I should be using that at least every week, right? I should have remembered my bank account number. I still have to look that up. Oh, yes. <laughs> that is me. I know what it ends with and what it starts oh. with. And then the numbers in between, I'm like, mm, just give me two seconds and uh, uh, there we go. Mm. And I think it's it's just become such a norm. It's like a, a thing that we just do now. It's like, oh, you know, you don't even try. I think that's the thing. It's like we've gone to this place where we're not even trying to learn certain things like off by heart. Like I remember when I was young, they drilled it into us. Like you need to know like uh, the house number off by heart, the neighbor's number off by heart. Yeah. You need to know. Um, no. this person's ID number, that person's, and so that oh, if anything happens, can, you can you know be like, you know. yes. And now so I'm like, the, if I'm stranded and my even, phone's off. This, the reason this even came up at dinner the other night is because, uh, one of, one of my, my, my little nephew's friends at school knows his mom's cell phone number off by heart. So if anything goes wrong or he gets lost or whatever, they can phone that number. And he's like, I don't know, he's five maybe six years old and he's like oh, eight three blah, blah 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 it's very sweet i mean like it's it's cute but also i don't suppose because we didn't use a phone all the time mm-hmm. and we also couldn't do things like i don't think it's really helpful for people to remember a hundred numbers i also don't think that doing mental arithmetic is necessarily a sign of any kind of genius it does 
help. I mean, listen, if I, if you say to me, what's 27 plus 42, I take a lot longer than the average person. Cause I'll pull up my calculator most of the time. Yes. So <laughs> and long division lost. is long gone. Multiplication is yeah. long gone. Let's just take out the calculator. Doop, doop, I, doop. I'd rather just use the calculator for shit like that. And if it makes me look stupid in someone else's mind, I'm always like impressed if someone can do very good mental arithmetic. I'm always like, wow. You know, if you say to somebody, so what's uh, 250 divided by three? And they go, and they figure it out immediately. Um, and I'm still going, oh, I mean, if I'm, well, it's roughly this, and I mean, you divide that and you add this. And it's just, it's, a, a, it's really, really stupid to watch me do it. But honestly, I mean, like, I think I'd rather use the phone. It's like directions. Think of how much time you, you save by just typing in directions to ways. Uh, you just type in an address and it shows you where to go uh, as opposed to picking up a map, looking at the map, trying to figure out how long it's going to take you, whether there's traffic on the route, which roads are closed. No way that you should be doing that. That is a machine's job. And this is where I think artificial intelligence, for those people who are really scared of it, you have to separate out the tasks that you want to continue doing that mm -hmm. you think you can, you can do better than a machine or that you can add value to or that you could be more... Um, that you could just do more efficiently um, or the machine can do more efficiently and then you let the machine do it. I don't see why we should be fighting the machines on that kind of thing. Um, so here, yeah, this is funny. Uh, I, I do remember this number. Uh, JP says, do you know the number when your drain is being naughty called triple four forty forty, right? Wait, That's what? what? <laughs> for, for a plumbing, there was an ad for a plumbing <laughs> service. If something rhymes, you always remember it. When you call triple four forty forty, when your drain is being naughty, so I mean, obviously, I remember that kind of shit, and I, I will never forget. <laughs> okay, that. Th that was before my era. Um, I'm definitely in the era of um SMS love to three uh three thirteen fourteen something like that. Like, <laughs> no. I mean, this is correct. Also, Sonella says. Uh, 089110505. That was our call in number for phone calls at, at sure. uh, 5FM. So, yes, I remember that. That's awesome. You, you're making me feel better about my shitty memory. All right. Here's Ben. Let's uh, add him to the chat. Ben has hey, entered everybody. the chat. Hey, hey, Ben. How's it? Are you in load shedding? I am. Yeah. You know, peak time in, in favela, but there is water this morning. So, super excited <laughs> about that. The favelas. Jesus. Yeah. Unbelievable. Oh, here I am. Friday. Well, at least it is Friday. Uh, you got any exciting plans for the weekend? I am, Gareth. Um, the reason I'm in my studio is because I'm going to the airport straight after this, going down to Cape Town. Uh, so I've got to go. Um, yeah, I've, I've got I've got two best, all, all my sort of best friends live in Cape Town, um, which is quite sad. You know, basically here in Johannesburg, I have you guys and I have Daniela and I have my business. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, right. everyone's down there. So yeah. going, go, go to go play some golf with him Friday, Saturday. Uh, seeing my mm -hmm. sister and her family Sunday, and then spending the week or well, three days with my parents. That sounds cool. That sounds yeah. very good. I mean, you don't, you don't get to see them as much because they live in another province. So that sounds awesome. That sounds like a fun way to spend the next couple yeah. of days. Good. And the thing is, like, we always sort of pretend that we're going to do this kind of stuff, and we never get around to it because there's always excuses. So. I just book flights and I'll work everything else out. And today's the day, going down. Well, you know, Ben, the, 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 some people will say you are very, very rich if you can even afford flights these days because, you know, petrol itself is, is too expensive for most people. So, yeah, well done. Good. All right. So rich. Uh, we've got a lot to talk about this morning. I, I noticed that you have made a decision, and I think you should explain this because maybe the rest of us want to join you on this. Next year, July, you're just going to hibernate for the whole of July. Forget about it. Ben's not coming yeah. out of his house. He's not leaving his bed. He's going to be oh, doing okay. his own thing. How exactly, how deep does this hibernation go? Are you going to be like a bear and just sleep? Yeah. For, no, no. First up, I'm not playing golf in July in Joburg. It's just silly. Don't go outside. It's just a mess. Um, I haven't been able to train for like three weeks because of the stupid flu stuff. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to walk into it next, next July. I'm not going to bother trying to like do these kind of things. Uh, it's just an absolute waste of time. July has hit me so hard, yeah. and I mean, I, I feel like a bit of a wreck right now. Like I'm getting back into it, um, but I just don't think it's. I, I think we must take time away from trying hard in life. And we, every single Monday, we, we're doing our best. And yeah. July is July. Basically, if you look outside, July is saying no. It just says yeah. no. 
So I don't want to fight that anymore. I'm going to basically and, and become is, even more reclusive. And this is coming from Ben, who doesn't give up and who likes a challenge and is constantly looking for ways to improve himself. So if Ben says July is a write-off, then maybe it is. Maybe we should yeah. move on. What do you because, think, Sandra? No, you look very disappointed. I'm just a bit taken aback by this like sudden, you know, writing July off because I wanted to share like a proud. Okay, it's not a proud moment, but last week I went to gym on Saturday and then uh-huh. the water was cold for some reason. It wasn't hot. And I still I was like, you know what? Because Ben has been talking about these like cold plunges and whatnot, I will take a cold shower. And like now yes. listening to you, you know, like I'm like. So next year we're just writing it off. We're not. Oh no, no. I'm, I'm obviously, I'm obviously not. I'm obviously not giving up on this. It's just, um, I think we should have levels of intensity. Um, you know, just like July is just a one big uphill thing. Like I'm still going to work out every single day if I can. I'm still going to do all those things, but it'll be mostly home based. I'm just going to take a, take a, take a, take a month away from the intensity of it all. Okay. I don't think that's oh, a bad okay. idea. I mean, listen. If, if money was no object, I promise you I would spend summer in, in South Africa and then I would spend summer in the Northern Hemisphere for the, for the winter here. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be in winter. I do not like winter. I do not like getting sick. I got a bit of a cold on like Monday, Tuesday, and I felt absolutely fine yesterday. And I felt absolutely fine waking up today, so I think I'm over it. Um, yeah. But it irritates me also. And I, I mean, I'm not on the, the strict kind of regimens that Ben imposes on himself, which I still admire. But I, I couldn't go to the gym for the last two or three days. Um, and I thought it's probably not a good idea to do that. Because if you go to gym and you're feeling sick, it, you can yeah. actually have, like, re- you can make it way worse. So yeah, I do feel like, I, but, but it makes you feel lethargic. You're not as tired when you get into bed at night. Um, you feel a bit lazy. You know, those kinds of things. So Simpiwa, I'm proud That's of you. Great. Keep doing those. Don't, don't seek them out. But if it happens, it happens. How, how bad was it, Simpiwa? It was horrible. I think I lost it all of three minutes. And I was just like, I don't know how the hell he does this. But I did. I literally had like a, you know what? Ben talks about this every week. I just have to stick it through. And just like, you know, like, just, just, just give it your awesome. And then after I was like, I'm never doing this again. <laughs> but that's, but that's good though. Three minutes is really good. Didn't you feel amazing afterwards? No, I was cold. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to suck it up and it's okay. And I did it. Like, <laughs> I did it. I think, I think that's yeah. very, very respectable. Well done. But Simpira, didn't you eventually warm up or are you a lizard? You know, you, I did. You, you, after... you eventually got warm, right? Yeah, but I'm just talking about the like the immediate like, oh my gosh, like it's cold and I wanted hot water and there's no hot water. I'm at the gym. Like, you know, you know, I was just like, this is not ideal right now. But because of you, Ben, because I was influenced, like in that moment, I was influenced by Ben. I was like, I'm going to stick it through. I'm, yeah. And we, yeah. we made it through. We survived. While we're talking amazing, about amazing. while we're talking about stuff that Simpiwe did this week, um, she made a hilarious video which I shared on my Instagram. So she took what what is like a tragic situation, but I don't think anyone died. I don't think anyone was killed during those Bree Street, uh, Bree Street uh, eruptions. But Simpiwe took the video and she put <laughs> that, um, "Hey, you can't park here." You can't park here. No, man, you can't, can't park, park the car there. Why you <laughs> park the car there? <laughs> and she put that on in the background. And uh, it, it seems to... how many people re, uh, reposted that from your TikTok? Yo, yo, it got such a, it, it did get like quite a lot of views, but it's like that sound on its own. Like every time I see an accident, every yeah, time I every... just see like, Cause just I just think of you can't park the car there. Why you park the car there? <laughs> and also you know, the original audio of that video was crazy. They were just like, ha, ha, ha. And I was like, I guess like <laughs> yeah. You know, the, 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 there was a time where we looked at load shedding like the worst thing that could happen to us in our day-to-day oh, lives. Right. And every yeah. single week we go, oh, load shedding, oh, okay, cool. Well, so what, like three hours? <laughs> I've, got this, I've got this group of friends and, and one of them sent the, the, the video and said, all right, I'll be honest, who put down exploding streets for July? <laughs> you know, like <laughs> bad things that can happen. Um, 
everybody's talking about it though and it's and it's not all good but the funniest thing about that video and i i made a remark about this on on instagram yesterday too uh is that as soon as those like within seconds of the the actual video footage that shows taxis lifting up into the air a huge chasm opening up in the road people falling down some people narrowly escaping death um it's amazing like seconds after that happens what is the first thing that the shop owners do they close the front of their shops because why well, there's, been an ex- there's, there's been an explosion gareth i mean they don't know yeah. it's the street they, they don't know that there's i mean i find it strange that no one knows why this thing exploded but if you've got if you've got a shop in town and someone coughs a little bit loud you're dropping those shutters like you've you got to think you look around yeah. you you're going to react yeah. like that no matter what well, let's just put this on, and then I do think we want to get to some sport for the weekend because I need to place a couple of bets. I did very poorly last weekend with the Springboks losing, and I was very pissed off yeah, about it. Me too. But, um, I'm going to win some money back. But look at this. Here's the actual video footage in case uh, it, you haven't seen it. I mean, it's been passed around on uh, phones to everybody, but uh, just in case you didn't see it, because it's kind of scary to see how quickly and how violently it all happened. And if they don't figure out how this happened, then... I, then I don't know. Because, I mean, like, anywhere in the world, you should be able to find out the reason that your street explodes. Okay. Here it is. And there you see the guy like winding down the front of his shop. But how quickly and how, how dramatically did that happen? I mean, those taxis jumped into the air. You know, taxis are a heavy thing, hey? A quantum. Yo, yo, yo. But the one thing, I saw a meme on Twitter already, and they were like, government is just looking at this and like the pretender. Ah, mm-hmm. It's going to be so nice. It's, going to, it's mm-hmm. like, uh, uh, can't you, it's gone. It's, it's, it's tickets. It's like this what would happened. You do? And what would you do like, if, if you're standing on the side of the road and suddenly all the cars on the road fly like four meters up into the air? What the hell are you going to do? How, what would you think? I would shit myself. Run away, run away. Always yeah. just run away. That's all we do. It's fight or flight. You can't fight you can't fight a, a broken street. <laughs> yeah. Well yeah. You know, what's worse is you experience that and then the next day you still need to go in a taxi and pass that road mm-hmm. or a different road again. And it's like do you really actually heal from that trauma? You know, all those people that are there, I'm sure maybe some of them got a few days off, but at the end of the day, you're going to be back in that taxi and back on that route. And you don't know if that road is even safe to travel on. And I think that's the real scary part, like how people have to quickly get over it. Yeah, we just move on, right? I mean, you're going to see people are going to be opening their shops on Bree Street today. They're going to be trying to resume their lives. Uh, Obviously, traffic will have to be redirected. I mean, this is not some little tiny little dorp with you know like two or three shops along the street this is a major street in our most our biggest city which is like the economic hub of the country and it's it's crazy that something like this could happen apparently we made the news all over the world because of this dramatic footage i mean this is not the kind of thing you see every day and a lot of people are speculating about what it could have been some people are saying gas explosion some people are saying there's undermining by the zamazamas but the fact is like if this is under undermining they wouldn't have had a straight line down the street that seems unlikely and it wouldn't all have collapsed at the same time like you might have had a sinkhole but you wouldn't have had this 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 explosive upward pressure so I think it seems unlikely just, and I'm, I'm no expert on, you know, geosciences, geology, um, explosives, or any of that kind of thing, but it doesn't seem to me possible that this could have been because of undermining. I think that this is seriously, this is a, this is a violent, there's the pipes that go under the streets. And you would imagine that these pipes exploded or, you know, this, it, a gas is the most likely explanation, I think. 
Yeah, but apparently there was no lasting gas pressure in the area. But I mean, really? if the sense of a you if, if the sense of a you were trials anything to go by, we're never going to find out what's been gone on here. No. Yeah, I mean, Ryan, the producer Ryan says it looks like a scene out of the Avengers movie. It really does, right? Jeez. Which was shot in which was shot in the CBD. They they shot some stuff there. I'm pretty sure they did. Okay, let's get yeah, cracking. Let's, uh, let's do some sport, Ben. Let's find out. Beyond the scoreboard with Ben, it is powered by Super Bets. Let us see what's happening here. And remember, you can also join in like uh, all of us are doing at the moment with Super Bets. We're trying to place our, our bets on various things. I don't know the first thing about this, neither does Simpiwe, but today we're going to figure some stuff out. So let's hit it. What do you got for us, Ben? All right, whether you like it or not, you're going to be watching golf this weekend because there's the 151st Open Championship at Royal Liverpool. And what an incredible first day it was. Now, mm. if you are watching golf nowadays, you know that Roy McIlroy is very good. Uh, he might not be the most popular guy, and he's got some interesting views around how you should be a golfer, you know. Don't touch other things other than the PGA Tour. But Roy McIlroy is incredibly good. Like, he's so incredibly talented, and he hits the ball like nobody else. But the thing I've realized about when I watch this guy really, really closely is that he's not actually that smart, I don't think, when it comes to how you plot your way around the course. He's kind of like that really, really hot person. He never has to learn the social skills. He got by on his looks. Rory just bashes it. And yesterday, you know, he has such a frustrating round. He's level par, but he could have been about five under. But he just makes stupid mistakes. Like, there's certain holes on this golf course you don't go near them because the bunkers are literally penalties. And this guy's just floating with cuck unnecessarily. So Rory <laughs> is level par. He is the favorite, no doubt. He won last week at the Scottish Open. Probably the best player pound for pound in the world. But he makes dumb mistakes and links golf. You will see your proverbial P word there. Who mm -hmm. is who is leading right now? There is amateur South African Chris, uh, Christo Lamprecht. He's like six foot eight. He won the British amateur, and he shot a sixty five yesterday out of nowhere. Uh, sorry, sixty six. So he's five under. Emiliano Grillo is also five under, and Tommy Fleetwood. Here's the other guy you got to watch out for. Tommy grew up playing Royal Liverpool, although the last time the tournament was there, he missed the cut. So I would say Tommy Fleetwood's pretty much the guy to go for here. But as a bit of an outsider, watch out for Max Homer. He's three under. The guy's been really good there, thereabouts. Really strong player. As Americans go, I would sort of back him. But all comes down to the weather. It's going to be pissing down around Liverpool all weekend. So it's going to be a massive leveler. Basically, roll the dice on this one, I think, actually. But Tommy Fleetwood's going to be your, your favorite. Rory, Rory's so ben, still not going to be smart enough for this one. I'm going to put some money on Tommy Fleetwood based entirely on what Ben says, because I don't know the first thing about this. Even though Ben's prediction for the Springboks last week lost me money, I'm going to prove that I trust him still. So that's going to be my Damn first thing. Damn those Springboks. Damn those Springboks. Speaking of the heavy rain, it might just also mess up the fourth Ashes test that happening in Manchester right now. It's going to be a big rain Saturday, Sunday. But England are actually really putting up a fight here. Australia in the first innings, 317. Ben Stokes thrust them in to bat. And England in reply, 384 for four. Yeah, some guy called Zach Crawley, 189 in the first innings, and Stokes and Brooke are currently at the crease. So England are currently leading by 60, what's that math? 67 runs, which is really impressive. There's two days to go, it give be huge water effects. But if England win this, they go 2 2 in the series, and then it's all to play for in the first and final. But it could just be a draw here, and that's what the Aussies want. Of course, this is the big weekend where the Women's fo Football World Cup starts. Now, the Banyana Banyana will be playing their first match against Sweden on Sunday. Just to give you an idea who's who in this whole thing, of course, when it comes to emerging sports, and this is what you can call women's professional sports, there's some teams that are way ahead of this, right? So if you look at Group A, New, New Zealand and Norway are going to be the big ones there, along with Switzerland. Group B, Australia, they are very, very strong, along with the Canadian women. In Group C, you've got Spain, who are going to be clear favourites. Japan also looking pretty good there. Group D, England, massive favourites there, and Denmark as well, pretty close. And then Group E, United States. Uh, America, those soccer players, they're the best in the world in the women's. Is. And then Group F, we've got France, who are going to be the clear favourites. Group G is where Banyana Banyana sit. Now, Sweden, who they're playing on Sunday, are going to be the big favourites for this entire group. Then you've got Italy and Argentina. And Banyana are going to be huge underdogs for this. There's no doubt about it because you've got to look at the structures. Our structure here isn't that great. So if the girls can get a win at any stage, it's going to be a massive result for them. 
But this yeah. is how you grow, right? This is how you grow. This is how you succeed in this realm. So Sunday morning, 7 a.m. If you are watching them, that is where that first game kicks off. This game's literally from now until for another month. So if you're into the women's football, really, really great time of year for you. And then finally, cool. we've got, obviously, the Formula 1, right? Now, Verstappen has got the last five pole positions. He's won the last six races. For me to tell you it's going to be anything other than Verstappen, again, is a very, very tricky one. If you are looking for an outsider for a podium position, it seems that Alonso could be a decent bet. But again, it's so hard to bet outside of Red Bull with these things. Uh, and I wish you the best of luck if you are a Formula One fan. If you're a Tour de France fan, also great weekend. So there's no rugby this weekend. Rugby Championship comes back next weekend. There's obviously no football because we're on a break. But that is what you have for this weekend. So if I put down a hundred rand on Max Verstappen, for example, in the Formula One, it tells me my odds are point three, so I'll win hundred and thirty rand. So I think it's worth sure doing, is. right? Okay. Yeah, I mean, look, no, another right. thing is that, you know, when you play these sort of accumulator bets and you have, like, say, Verstappen, then you've got, say, Tommy Fleetwood, uh, you've got the draw and the test match, whatever it is, those things bounce up. So, based on one thing, based on numerous things, obviously your odds can be various or varied on, on the back of that. Okay. All right, let's do it. I think this is a cool way to go into the weekend. I'm very happy. I've got some things to bet on. I might even take an interest in Formula One. Who knows? Let's go. Let's see what happens. But just like when it, like I said, when it, come, when it comes to the golf, it is going to be pissing down Saturday and Sunday. And Lynx Golf is a massive humbler. So you can take a flyer on a couple of guys. on the, Anyone from level par right now towards the, the leaders, I reckon you got an outside chance for something interesting happening. Awesome stuff. And don't forget, Superbet supports responsible gambling. Strictly no under 18s. Winners know when to stop. South African Responsible Gambling Foundation toll free counseling hotline is 0800 006 008. Go to Beyond the Scoreboard on cliffcentral.com and you can get a 50 Rand free bet when you sign up for Superbets. Just click on the banner on the right hand side of the page and you can go and join us. So, Piwi, have you, have you placed any yet? So, I've signed up. And this is the weekend where I'm like, I'm actually going to do it. So I have Ryan who's going to be coaching me through it because um, he's, he's had a couple of wins and he's looking very nice. And yeah, I'm, 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 a, I'm ready now. Um, and I've been catching up with the sports. I, ben, I don't know if you uh, saw the, the World Cup's um, advert, the Women's uh, World Cup advert. And that's got me interested. So I think I'm going to follow the Women's World Cup and play some bets there because that advert was completely like Montebella. Yeah, mm. guys, so just on that, remember, it's being played in New Zealand. Uh, it's very, very far away. So home home team favorites are going to be considered Australia looking pretty good. And, they are, uh, and the Americans, you know, they've been good for a very, very long time. Sure. So that's all I can say sure. on the Women's World Cup. All right. Very, very good. So there we go. we got some sport to look forward to this weekend. So apparently, I mean, this is quite interesting. Um, Prince Harry's book, which we were talking about six months ago. Remember, it was all anyone was talking about. Uh, the mm -hmm. book called Spare. Um, so already, I mean, a lot of people predicted that Meghan Markle and Harry would be splitting up soon. And I've already seen some rumors to that effect starting to make their way to the internet. Not that I'm looking for Harry and Meghan stories, but they come up. You know, so liar, again, for those people, massive liar. Uh, I promise you they are. So apparently the news this week is that the book, which was released only six months ago uh, and obviously created a huge stir, soared to the top of Amazon's bestseller list. 1.43 million copies were sold on the debut day, earning the book a prestigious Guinness World Record. The remarkable <laughs> feat earned the book the distinction of being the fastest selling nonfiction book in history. Mm. But listen to this. It seems to have lost its charm among readers as copies of the book are being left behind at holiday hotspots, causing a unique situation for hotels and resorts. Popular vacation destinations like Spain, Turkey, and Greece have been inundated with discarded copies of Prince Harry's book. So funny. <laughs> Tourists have been spotted leaving the book unattended by the poolside, <laughs> placing it in the hotel reception, and even throwing it away in the rubbish bins at the beach. <laughs> Well, it is spare. <laughs> it is spare, right. The surplus spare copies has become a headache for holiday specialists on the beach as local bookstores and libraries are unwilling to even accept them. Zoe Harris, the chief customer officer at On the Beach, 
expressed her frustration at the overwhelming number of books they've had to handle. So talk oh. about a fall from grace. I mean, going from the most successful, fastest selling, best selling book in the world just six months ago to people are just leaving them lying around because they have so little interest in them shows you that the, the bark was greater than the bite. People weren't <laughs> as gripped as they thought they'd be by the whole thing. It must be, this must be devastating news for poor old Harry and Meghan, right? But also, like, it shows you people's obsession with car crashes. Like, who buys that? Mm -hmm. There's good, there's mm -hmm. good books out there. There's good old books out there. Yeah. I, I have to go on record and say I never bought it. Oh, um, don't lie. I can, I can see behind you just above your left ear. There's a, there's a, there's a signed copy of Spare. <laughs> I promise you, it's you, not you, here. You, you've, remember, you've even got the hardcover. No, no, no. Remember, remember I, I, I breezed through a PDF that someone oh. had sent me. I didn't feel bad about this. Um, sure. And at the time, I was like, okay, I've got to see what this fuss is about. And remember, we talked about it on the show. But honestly, I've forgotten most of the stuff that was in there because it was just drivel. And I'm not surprised people are leaving it behind. I've not seen the book in Spain being left around Madrid. Oh, I've not seen the book in Spain being left around Madrid, Ibiza, and now Barcelona. Fact checking, UG. Yeah, but Yonder, your personal experience does not mean that the story is invalid. This is a mm -hmm. new story. In other words, just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean that it's not happening. But also, Yonder, teach us how you can go to Spain and live in that really hot lovely weather while we're freezing our tits off here in south africa how about that madrid, madrid ibiza and now barcelona that's just yonder flexing it doesn't even yeah. care about the books absolutely yeah must be absolutely. nice but here's my prediction um, we're gonna go get uh, another installment of uh megan and harry because they have to release a podcast they need to release a documentary of this fall of grace and um you know oh. the book doing so great and they're not doing great at all and how that really affected so, them and, and, and giving so, back i promise you all of their projects <laughs> all of their future projects were cancelled remember netflix said to them okay we're not interested anymore uh we're not commissioning anything new uh all their ideas have been rejected nobody really cares but i'll tell you what the next installment will be and i'm, I'm going to say this again i've said it before megan's gonna leave him she's going to look at this guy and go actually he is a loser I thought I was going to be this fairy tale princess. I thought we were going to make gazillions telling and selling our story. And when that doesn't work anymore, she's going to leave him. She's, uh, she's not the kind of person to hang uh, around. Well, I, uh, I, yeah, like, I'm going to throw my two cents in here, seeing as this is the conversation point. But I don't think she will. I think this is as good as that she can grift. I don't think she can grift better than this. You think this is it, huh? This is her, this is her ceiling. This is her peak grift. Let's be honest; she's not attractive. Um, no. She's her, 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 her name is Puss, as they would say in the Cape, with a lot of people and a lot of institutions. <laughs> so I think she, this is as good as she's going to get, um, and she's just going to milk this for us with. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. All right, then. we're going to see more of them. We're going to see. More. That's my prediction. We're just going to see more from a YouTube channel because they don't need Netflix. They'll create their own YouTube yeah. channel. You know, and and then before you know it, it's a get ready with me, how we have to deal with all the paparazzi no. and how we have to, you know, and then they're on TikTok doing the dances like, oh, change is happening now. <laughs> I, think, I think there's a part of them that's a huge attention seeking thing, but I also think that they're really after the money. I mean, these two just, they really need the money. You know, they don't have, they don't want to work. They don't want to actually go to work every, you know, neither of them have a job. They need yes, the money. The, it's not just that. They think that the world needs them. That's why they do yeah. these things. Because, because they feel they feel like they're mm -hmm. goodwill ambassadors for the entire earth. Like they've just suffered a major, a major <laughs> challenge and suffering. And you know, when you go on Oprah and Oprah tells you that you're like strong and all this kind of stuff, you now think yeah. that's me. I'm I'm on the front lines of, of suffering. This is it, mm. this is a, it's a different kind of celebrity psychopath that we've seen pop up in the last ten years. It's not so much about the money. This is their, this is their, this is their sort of sharp full moments every single day of their lives to go out there and do this. <laughs> okay, well, let's move on. I mean, we don't have to talk more about those two because no doubt they'll come up again. Um, so you interviewed a bodybuilder this week who's been tremendously oh. successful and he's a hell of a human being, right? His name is uh, Spusiso Cortello. Yes. 
So, I mean, I, I, I absolutely love the fact that there's so many great supporting stories in this country. And we're doing a campaign for one of our clients where we un uncovered this, you know. So it's not just about, like, the tried and tested. And it's a lot of hard work to kind of find these people. And it's even harder work to kind of make these interviews really, really strong because they're not well-known people. But they are, yeah. it's so incredibly rewarding. And bodybuilding, people always have certain perceptions around it. mostly negative, I think, from people I've spoken to. But just understanding this guy's life has been the highlight of my week. Um, I've, I've been to training sessions with him. I had, had a proper sit down. We did like an hour and a half chat. Um, I asked him some interesting questions. And to understand what he must go through, what he has been through to this point to get to who he is. I, it's, it's so cool. I felt like I was, I was not in a world of mediocrity anymore. Chatting to this guy, I felt like I was in a world of performance and excellence again. And it's, it's always so refreshing, you know. And I think if I had money was no object, this was how I would spend my life. I would just interview people every single week and just keep finding these stories. So um, mm -hmm. I don't have to... Don't, 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 don't give it away, but like what, what kinds of things did you learn from him? Because people, uh, everyone can teach you something, especially when they're a specialist at something. What did you learn from him? Just, just one thing that you could share with us that would make our lives more interesting or better. I just think it's one of those things where you find your purpose, you find your passion, and you understand that you are the person that's going to be the best with that. Now, people will go, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. But you don't see it because you realize after like two, three months, like, oh, shit, this is hard work. With this dude, it's the levels that how deep he goes into his life. And you look at it and go, yeah, he could probably quit this whole stuff right now. He could do something else. He's a smart dude. He's got other options. But he's found a way that he can mm. be the best in the whole world and that excites him you know just for example when he so his um his coach is someone you know very well gareth jack lotter mm -hmm. when when, when, the, when the two of them got together around 20 sort of 50 i think it was he weighed like 107 kilograms on stage he's now about 127 kilograms on stage oh. Now, when you think weight gain, it's no biggie. I mean, Sims right now, I think he's like 142 kilograms. But his body fat percentage right now is only 5%. Sure. So just, just think of that. 140 kilograms, right? He's a, he, he is a pure block of muscle. You know how hard it is to maintain muscle? It's hard. I know there's various things that go into it. But every single day, he's found a way. Every single day, he's found a way hmm. that's like, okay. And, it's, and what impresses me the most to answer your question is that Instant gratification is never in his life. Ever, 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 ever. People talk about this kind of stuff. Delay gratification is how you get major success. This guy's working on like a 10-year goal. He's going to be Mr. Olympia, but it's not happening tomorrow. It's not happening next month. Right. It might happen this year. And to realize like how big the sacrifice is for the ultimate gain and how slim the chances are, which is the only thing slim about him, but he's going to put the work in. So I'm, I'm, going, to share well, these, I'm going to share these videos online in the next couple of weeks. Um, I think yeah, they're really, really do. cool. Listen, we, we, just... we're, going to take, we're going to take a break, but I just want to show you what this guy looks like, just so you get some idea of what Ben's talking about. And this is an old picture. Hey? He's much bigger than this now. Check this guy out. How's that? Yeah, that's, nice. an old pi that's an old picture, and that's an old Labrador. Um, this, this <laughs> <into God. laughs> Oh. Labrador lion. All right. We'll be back with some more in just a moment. Cliffcentral.com. It is a Friday morning. We got lots of things to talk about. And we want you to join us and also you can comment and like and subscribe, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We need all of that. Up next in the Auto Trader Podcast. What cars have has been able to do is they've, they've changed how people interact with the world and each other and accessibility to things. I mean, we always talk about why the first car essentially gives people freedom. Um, it offers you an opportunity to f get a job wherever you want. Mm. Um, it, it gives you an opportunity to change your lifestyle. Um, and I think that's kind of the big difference that, that I, I have against you know people who think, you know, rock, I mean, rockets are cool, planes are cool, but I think in terms of everything, cars are, have definitely made the biggest impact, including trucking and logistics. Yeah, I mean, um, it's created freedom. Mm. It's created independence. Mm. Um, it's created the ability to make the world smaller. Mm. You know, besides the internet, that's made the world smaller now. Because you know, with the internet, you need to be able to deliver stuff. Yeah, and cars are critical to that uh, to that chain, mm. to that value chain. So, so, uh, so, so the internet is in the, the the reality of the internet and um, 
and click to buy or e-commerce is made possible yeah. because of vehicles. Catch us every Monday at 9 a.m. on YouTube and on autotrader.co.za. Time you listen to that 80s show, Tom Cruise lives another 10 years. Every Friday on CliffCentral.com, Paolo and Dory review movies, reminisce about old songs, remember childhood places that are now car parks, and say some outrageously rude things about Patrick Swayze's brother. That 80s show, new episode every Friday, live or as a podcast on CliffCentral.com. All right, all right, all right. It is Friday morning on cliffcentral.com and we have lots to do. We have Ben here, we got Simpiwa here and hopefully a good start to your day. I hope you've got a couple of plans in the bag for the weekend and most of them involve staying warm and not getting sick. That's the most important Yay. thing to do. Yeah, says Ben, who got sick and me who got sick. So I think this is kind of a funny comment. We were talking about a bodybuilder who Ben interviewed yesterday and Sanere says, the fat from my occasional sirloin probably has more fat, not even ribeye, than that guy does. Correct. 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 All right. <clears throat> so, Ben, one last thing about, uh, you know, the stuff that, that you bring unique insights into. We've been talking a lot about Drickus over the years because you, you know him and, you, you know, he was, he's obviously been in the news lately. He won that fight not so long ago. Um, the, the, the big rivalry, though, is this guy that you told us about, this um, Adesanya, right? Yeah, and apparently, yeah. apparently that fight, that fight is off now. Well, it was never really on, to be technically correct. People oh. were talking about people were talking about Sydney being the opportunity, and he was like, "Cool, I'll fight next. Whoever wants wins can fight me." But you know, no deal was signed. Essentially, Drickus would have had two months turnaround, so sixty-eight days, I think, to be technical. Sixty-eight days turnaround from beating Robert Whitaker to fighting Israel Adesanya. That mm -hmm. is a huge, huge ask. <clears throat> But then people will say, oh, well, Adesanya did that. He had a turnaround against Anderson Silva for Calvin Gastelum of 67 days. And good for him. But Anderson Silva to Calvin Gastelum isn't Robert Whitaker to Israel Adesanya. That's a massive turnaround for two much bigger fights. And Drickus is well within his, <laughs> in his rights to say, no, nah, I'm not going to do that one. And he does have a foot wow. injury right now. So there's also that. But what I do find very interesting is that Israel Adesanya is now calling him dickless to pussy. And he's making this whole thing like he's ducking the fight. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, it's just, again, like, th there are so many layers to the sport. And Israel Adesanya is probably going to go down as one of the absolute greatest. So you look at his record, how many fights he's had, the way that he's dictated who he fights and how he fights them. But I don't think he understands who Drickus is. He really, he just thinks he's another, another mm. guy. So Drickus is like, yeah, he's, he's pretty confident. He's quite relaxed about this. He does have an injury. And he will dictate when he fights again. So he's... Now, doing all the, is Adesanya is doing all the things he would ordinarily do to psych out an opponent, to shit talk, and mm -hmm. just to kind of be who he is. Because he's an absolute champion. But he doesn't know amount, who he's at. Answer to nothing, right? I mean, it's like he's fighting against Thunder here because nothing's <laughs> going to happen. Well, he's fighting against Thunder with Drickus because, yes, he will be able to amplify these kind of things. His fanboys will back him up. But he doesn't mm -hmm. quite, I think, appreciate who he's getting into a war with. Because <laughs> it's just... 
And it, it's it's interesting to see this unfold because the rest of the world kind of doesn't either. But if you know what Drukas's background, like we do in this country and where he's come from, it's just it's going to amount to probably the biggest fights in the UFC since I think McGregor versus Noega Medov. It really is going to be so huge. And the fact that Drukas isn't doing it in July is only making it bigger. If he goes out to that Sydney card, that Sydney card is shit. Like, they don't have any Aussies on it for a start because they're all injured or they've just fought. The UFC put that together because they got a new TV deal and it's going to absolutely fall flat. I mean, Tai Tuivas is pretty much the biggest draw card in that. He's like the fifth-ranked heavyweight or whatever it is. So, you know, I just tell you will fight because he likes to stay current. And you'll fight against Sean Strickland, who is, if you want to find out, a functioning psychopath slash mass murder in the making, listen to Sean Strickland's interview with Joe Rogan. <laughs> This guy is the most unhinged human being you've ever come across, and he yeah. had a very in- he had a very interesting childhood. Let's be honest. <laughs> and this dude, he is all over the place. So he's now going to rile Izzy up because he's already called Izzy China's little slut because he went and fought for China oh, in this kickboxing thing. So he's. I mean, another thing about the sport is you you often talk your way into the big fights. So Strickland's sure. basically just calling calling Izzy out. And Strickland's the only guy who's available to fight Izzy who he hasn't fought yet. So that's going to happen in September in Sydney. Drickus is going to do whatever he wants, whatever he's entitled to. Adesanya's going to keep shit-talking him. All the while, <laughs> Drickus is just building confidence. And he's going to get, in that, again, get into that cage with that dude. He's going to be like, okay, I'm going to run right. through you. And, Dr- and Drickus is going to be like, the fuck you will. It's all amounting yeah. into the greatest fight. You know, I just I do have to say again, as someone who doesn't watch any of this MMA stuff, I, I love all the shit talking and the build up and the psychological warfare because we've all started to accept now. I don't think there's anyone in the world who goes, Well, sports just about your physical abilities. It is, yeah, but it's so much more than that, right? And you don't have to. I mean, we we spoke about this on Monday because Wimbledon was such a big thing. You know, this Alcaraz kid who came out of nowhere, but it's a mental strength game. And you look at the at the games they play uh, to to get a small advantage in confidence over the other guy, and it's incredible. Like if you if you do it right, you can really cause some serious damage to your opponent's psyche, and then it's easy to steamroll over them with the physicality. Exactly, it's also momentum as well. You know, Adesanya's got this whole momentum thing. It's like he chooses his fighters. He's this is because this mm. is just to show you what an incredible champion is. He always tells. The world who he's going to fight next other people the UFC tells them who they fight they say cool this is yeah. your next opponent these are your options other Sanyo wins a fight and goes i'm taking that guy next and now what <laughs> Rickus is doing it's like well hang a second let's 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 slow this down a bit cool you you're right. gonna, you will fight me but you're not gonna fight me right now and it's just you gotta change the pace <laughs> all right awesome uh just before you go ben simpiwa wants to show us a funny video of a south african photographer and this is something you've done. You go into the into the game reserve, and um, sometimes you've got to be careful of the animals. In fact, you should always be careful of the animals, but sometimes the animals Ideally. have the advantage, just like we were talking about the psychological advantage on the sports field or on the court or whatever. So take a look at this, and then we want to hear Simpiwe and your comments. This is um, this is something that could happen to you if you I don't know your wits about you. you think about wild. it. Oh, man, (laughs) that is the ultimate South African reaction when anything is coming at you, attacking you. All you say is (laughs) like, like that is, yeah, that I was, I was, I was finished when I saw that video. um, And I was just like, yeah, he's South African. Like he is very much South African. And uh, yeah, that's it. (laughs) I've seen, I've seen uh, similar and much more violent videos where, where the rhino or the elephant or whatever it is will actually smash the car up and start like pushing it around. And let me tell you something. Once that elephant or that rhino decides they don't like a car, the car will come off second best. Doesn't matter how big it is, especially if it's a game drive vehicle. Well, you know, there was a, there was a story on Wild Earth recently. The these guys were um, tracking some lions who were hunting buffalo, and they mm-hmm. just got into it. It was like the the light was kind of fading a little bit. They just got into a position where 
they didn't see the certain buffalo on the left. Lions came, outflanked the buffalo, and the buffalo ran and charged straight into the car. But, like, really made, more than made a dent. So you've got a lion trying to attack a buffalo. You've got a buffalo basically trying to run through the car because they're not the smartest. And you're yeah. sitting there, and you've got your TV camera. You can't really move too far away. Your entire vehicle is open, and you have this uh-huh. carnage. I mean, can you imagine just the sound of that? Like you've essentially you essentially sustained a car crash because a buffalo is bigger than a Hyundai gets or whatever, and this thing is sure. t bone. This thing is t bones you. Plus, it's still active. It's still fighting. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Listen, I mean, we talk about MMA. Just don't fight with animals. They will, they will, especially in their environment, they will usually win. Yeah. And if you don't have a gun, humans are at such a disadvantage. Like we forget that if we don't hunt in packs and we don't have weapons, we're pretty much useless. Our hands and our brains uh, aren't that helpful in fighting yeah. buffalo or anything that's, that's much, much stronger than us. I mean, even, you know, like famously, chimpanzees and things will win against us if we don't have tools. But but also animals aren't scared to die because everything is is life or death for them. So they're high stakes fighters. With us, right. it's like Ugh, I've got a show to watch later. I'm going holiday. <laughs> I, I... Well, I do like I like the fact that it's footsack because footsack comes up a lot. Yes, it is the word. It's the go-to word for South Africans when they're hot full of anything, when they're traumatized by something, when they're about to get into a fight or running away from something. That is the ultimate word. And it was just so funny like to see that. And then like there's a comment on it. They're like, yeah, uh, only South Africans think that all animals understand what the word futek means. Like, <laughs> because, a dog, because a dog understands futek does not mean that it's, you know... Giant rhinoceros is going to go, oh, oh shit, you said foot sack. Let me leave. <laughs> Love it. All right. Well, here's one last thing. Uh, Slippery Pickle says, my favorite is a video where the bull elephant has a sexy fun time with a turquoise Uno. <laughs> I haven't seen that, but that sounds awesome. <laughs> all right. <laughs> ben, I know you need to go. Uh, enjoy Cape Town and let us know next week how it all, go- how it all went. Um, and we'll catch right, up everybody. with you soon. Fantastic. Cheers. Have a great day. It's Ben Karpinski on a Friday morning. It is 7.16. We have a special guest, someone who I haven't caught up with this guy for ages. Um, do you remember we did that TV show during COVID called So What Now on ENCA? Mm-hmm. Well, since then, uh, this guy, because he was, he was one of our writers on the show. And since then, he's moved to the US and we thought we'd have a catch up with him. He actually lives in Chicago now. Is that right, Gatsby? That's when you're in Chicago? <laughs> yeah, what's up? How the hell are you, man? I'm good. I'm doing good. What's up, uh, Johannesburg? How are you guys doing? Awesome. So let me give everybody a little bit of background because <laughs> I know about you, but maybe you know some people and everyone else doesn't. So yeah. uh, your, your real name, Adiola Gabriel Ademuwagun, right? Did I get that right? <laughs> yeah, How do I say to, your surname? It's fun watching a white guy struggle to pronounce my name. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, okay, wait, wait, before you even tell us, before you tell us, you try and say it, Simpiwe. Uh, oh. <laughs> go on, try, go on, try. Um, 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 <laughs> All right, you tell us, go ahead, uh, go and uh, Gatsby, tell us. I like how you said, even the black people can pronounce it, it's not my fault. <laughs> Um, it's Adiola, uh, Gabriel uh, Demoago. Uh, that's how you pronounce it. Uh, even I'm you make it sound, you make it sound, it's so easy. sexy when you say it. Yeah. You know, like, even I'm saying it in the most whitest <laughs> accent ever. <laughs> how do people, how do people in America do that? Because they haven't, I mean, Americans can't uh, pronounce anything African. I don't even tell them that's my name. <laughs> I have a white name for them. <laughs> I just right, tell them. I just said I'm Gatsby, and that's it. Yeah, right. and, you know, you know the funny thing is, uh, in in America, uh, when uh, black people and white people like approach me and they're like, "Oh, where you from?" If black people approach me, like you know, where you from? I said, "I'm I'm from Nigeria," directly, like you know. But if white people approach me, like where you from? I just said, "I'm from Africa," because they never <laughs> usually ask me like a for the inquiry. <laughs> they just like they oh. Don't I'm- know. Because they don't know, they like Africa, and usually they're like, they don't even ask where in Africa. They just say like, "Oh, do you know right. 
Kunta Kinte. I'm like, yeah, of course I know Kunta Kinte. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 used, I, used, I used to get mad at them, but now I just like mess with them. And I'm like, yeah, I know Kunta Kinte. He lives in um, uh, Wakanda. And they're like, is that not a fictional place? I'm like, no, it's not a fictional place. It's right next to Wakanda. <laughs> you can take a Hoover there, like, you know. <laughs> I just like mess with them like that. So, oh, uh, <laughs> it's been. That is so funny. Yeah. So, yeah. dude. Um, last time I spoke to you, you, you were still in South Africa and, and obviously now moving to Chicago, first of all, what's that been like and, and how's America been for you? Because I hear a lot of people who move to America who absolutely love it. They think it's the coolest country in the world. There's lots of opportunity there. I know that you're no stranger to America. You've dealt with Americans before and you've been there before a couple of times, but now you're living there. What is it like? It's really cold in Chicago. It's like super cold. It's like Even now? No, now it's like no, now it's like it's as hot as like uh, Lagos, like you know, it's like <laughs> really nice now. Like yeah, you can go to the beach and spend time outdoors or whatever. But like no, like in the winter it's like really cold. Like I, like I had to wear like five layers of jackets and like during the winter. Because I mean, famously, famously Chicago is like the windy city, and that that wind yes. comes straight off Lake Michigan, and then it comes down those streets and just. Hits you right in the face. Yeah, it's really cold. Even people from New York City and um, from LA. I mean, LA is usually hot, but you know, even people from other parts of um, America, like, they scared of coming here. It's like really cold. It's like really, really cold. Yeah. Sanele, Sanele wants to know this is the question everybody's asking. You live in Chicago, you seem Nigerian. <laughs> Are you one of the two Nigerians that attacked Jesse Smollett? <laughs> no, no, no. But I'm, those are my cousins. Um, <laughs> yeah, they told me about the whole game. <laughs> those are my cousins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, nobody, nobody in Chicago believed that crap. Because, you know, Chicago is, like, really cold. And nobody's trying to mess around. Yeah. Because he claimed, like, two... Oh, people from the MAGA continent or whatever, like, you know, attacked him in Chicago yeah. in the winter. I'm like, nobody in Chicago would believe that because everybody, like, during the winter is, like, already dark at 5 p.m. here in Chicago. Nothing right. And he, and, he was, and he was, like, going for a Subway sandwich or some bullshit. I mean, that was such an obviously bullshit story from the beginning. Um, so what, do you, what are you doing over there? Because you're a, you're a comedy writer. You... Yeah. Um, you 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 do lots of comedy tours. You've um you've you've done stand up. So how, what's yeah. the what's the market like there for that? Well, it's so it's a, it's a tough industry, like really tough. I, I wouldn't uh sugarcoat it and say it's easy how it is. Like really tough. Like you know, sure. um to like two days from now, I have a show on Saturday somewhere yeah in Chicago at the Lincoln Lodge. My third show there. Uh, this month, so mm -hmm. they have like a variety of shows. They have all, all type of shows, so you have to like write for different shows, like write twelve minute set for different shows, to, like like twelve minute set for this show, another twelve minute set for this show, another twelve minute set for this show. You can't do the same twelve minute set you do for this show, for the next show or the next show. So you have to have at least an hour special. <laughs> and back in South Africa, I didn't I didn't have to worry about that at all. Like you know, it was just really different. Like you know, so. Is, is very tough and you are, you have to be really great at what you do like you know your company we like we we have a network on uh, on a facebook uh, group chat called uh, the chicago comedy scene and there are at least 9000 comedians on that group 9000 comedians 9000 comedians in that group like there are like it are uh, more than probably um in a week more than 20 places you can try new jokes every week like i could leave wow. the house tonight and go somewhere and just oh i have an idea i want to try it out it's like but oh, but, but i mean street. gatsby if, if you if you're up against that many other comedians what are the chances you're even going to get a gig and and especially one that pays and what is the standard like because if there's that much competition it must be insane it is insane like you know you just have to like stand out like uh, when I first moved here, I used to do like a lot of observation of jokes and all that, and I just realized that you know that's not gonna get that's not gonna get me ahead of the game. So I started doing topical beats now, and that's really helped me. Like now I just <laughs> I just do like Bill Maher all day, like just talk about topical beats, and 
it's kind of interesting now that I started doing topical beats, people are paying more attention to me because they're like, oh, this African kid is talking about Jordan Nillies. I don't even know about Jordan Lilly. So Jordan Lilly is this kid that got uh, choked to death by this white kid uh, from um, New York City. And he was just like, he lost his life to this like 25-year-old um, kid named Danny Pelney. And that was really strange and sad. And I, I just started writing something about that. Whatever I think is like, you know, uh, where I think white people can or black people can relate with. And I, I think that really, really helped me in so many ways. So did you see that explosion we had in Johannesburg? Did you, you guys get that in the news where our whole street blew up? No, I have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. What happened? Have we got news for you? Okay. Uh, just take a look. I'm, I'm going to play the first 10 seconds of this. I can't believe you guys don't know about this. You people in Chicago are so stupid. You don't pay any attention. <laughs> no. Watch this. <laughs> What is like? What is that? No, that that's that's crazy. What was that? Is that a bomb or something? That's what we're still trying to figure it out. They everybody says they don't know what it was. I mean, it looks like something you kind of should find out what it was because it could be the end of the earth. It could be Armageddon. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we've got um. We've got this one guy on the show with me on, on, on Mondays and Tuesdays. His name is Bakabantu. He says, he says the end is nigh. He said, like, this is proof that the world is coming to an end and that, that God is sick of us human beings. Whatever no, that, that is. I mean, that, like the whole, you saw the whole street split in two. Yeah. And for like a kilometer, by the way, that's not just a small area. It's for a yeah. kilometer of that road. It's crazy. Man, so, I, I'm, yeah, I'm really sorry. You were going to say something? Oh, yeah. So Gareth just played the video of this explosion that took place. And Ryan just showed me some AI um, images that have been generated. I think he's loaded oh, yeah? some of those pictures. Um, and right. someone has basically like created um, pictures from that explosion, like of um, a fashion runway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> from that explosion. Like, oh. what? Wow. Like people hey. don't waste time, hey? And this is AI. Um yeah. That's insane. Free how, I mean, these are most beautiful pictures, but also not so great because I mean that's probably what we're going to be dealing with for a couple of months, right? While they fix these roads. And it really does look the road looks like that. They don't have these beautiful people on, but um in these, in well, these where, 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 where did this happen? Like where in Johannesburg did this happen? Bree Street, um, in the C B D. Oh, of course, it's usually like <laughs> CBD. Of course, yeah. I, I have no idea why. That's really strange. But you know, I didn't know that was happening. Like you know, like you know, like you guys are miles away from us. So I don't, I don't know what's happening. You know, so, so Africa, Gatsby, but, yeah. How's so? So I know you Americans because I'm going to call you an American now. You Americans don't know what's going on outside of America. But tell no, us what. Not really. Tell us what the hell's happening inside America because I I listen to a lot of American. Uh, podcasts i watch a lot of american news i see what's going on on the internet so i know that this joe biden has got to be the most senile old man in the whole world to hold the news. <laughs> it worries I mean, me you know i wake up in the morning and i'm like maybe that explosion in the cbd is is joe biden pressing a button wrong on like some, <laughs> you know because i he doesn't he doesn't the other day there was a video just this week of him talking to i think the Israeli foreign minister or something, and he's sitting in the chair, but he's like this. He's like muttering yeah. with his head, almost like he's asleep, and he's like sleep talking. Yeah. And I think I think he must be like who's in control if he's as uh as addled as he looks to be? Who's I actually mean, running this? I mean, think about it this way. First of all, Biden, how old is he? He's, he's in his 80s. Yeah, fine, sure. But it's like He's a Democrat, he's a liberal, and he's like one of the like reasonable people right now in America, like that you can actually think reasonable. Are yeah. you being is this a comedy skit of yours? Or are you trying to no, be serious? Not, wait, check it out, check it out. What choice do we have? Obviously, uh, Trump is gonna win the Republican Party nomination. Who is he like think about it? Who is he like you know contesting against uh Ron DeSantis? He has zero charisma, he can you know he, he could even pull off like his announcement on Twitter. Uh, Mike Pence, the most boring person on earth. That's why he's the governor of Indiana. Indiana is like in the Midwest. 
like very super boring state. I was in Indiana for like two months. I wanted to return to Africa. <laughs> it was like super boring, this crap. And who else is he contesting against? Tim Scott is also like a Republican. He wants to be the next Barack Obama. I don't even think Democrats are ready to give us another Barack Obama. Biden might be hold, but think about it. Who else are we like, you know, trying to like, you know, put against Biden, Trump? Yeah, Biden might be tripping every now and then on sandbags. Like, you know, he could be tripping every now and then. All right? the time. The guy can't, he doesn't even know where to walk. And when he yeah, does walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On one hand, we, Trump, yeah, Trump knew where to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Biden is tripping on something, but Trump is constantly tripping on balls. So he does your choice. Like, you, you know. Do you have any, do you have any explanation for the cocaine they found in the White House? How about that? Well, well, first of all, uh, the president has a son who is a crackhead, so <laughs> that's like the re most reasonable thing you can like, you know, come up with. Like, oh, it's probably Joe Biden and so on. Like, you know, but I don't think it's I don't think it's yeah, under. So no, I don't right. think. Uh, is Joe Biden's son, no, Joe no. Biden's son Hunter is a crackhead. Yeah. But you know what? You know what the Secret Service said this week? They're closing the investigation. They yeah. can't. They can't figure it out. Like they they they've tried everything. They just have no idea where to start looking for who might have left the coke. Wow. Meanwhile, we've got a, we've got I a mean, convict, I mean, convicted. I mean, self-admitted. Yes, DC. Everybody in DC does cocaine. They do more cocaine in DC than Hollywood. Like even like everybody. The interns, the staff over there, like people are walking crazy hours. It could be anybody. Like, but in, what I think it, the, the person I think did it really is um, probably Donald Trump Jr. <laughs> because he could have left some stash. Yeah. You, are you, you, really, <laughs> you really have, you have drunk the Chicago Kool Aid. I mean, you sound, <laughs> you sound like you're in, in, in like woo woo land with all the Democrats. No, because, no, no, oh, yeah. no, no. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. You are. You're totally, you've lost your mind. You've no. become uh, what they call Trump derangement syndrome. No, I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not. I'm not. I, I, I try to listen to both sides. I listen. I have friends who are conservatives. I have friends who are liberals. Yeah. I have friends who are name, moderates. And I I, 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 I try to listen to all parties and like, you know, try to be reasonable. I no, it's not Trump. Like Trump is like the worst person to ever be president. But why would you say, give me, give me a reason why you'd say that why do i think it's because yeah, just one one reason and, and i don't want you to do comedy here i want you to actually tell me why he's the I've worst person the, i've seen the show veep yes yeah you know jonah from veep mm -hmm. that's what trump reminds me of he's a child he's not supposed yeah, to ever be that, near the that is a office a, ever is a, hang on he's, he's, a, he's a narcissist I mean, he doesn't that he doesn't look, end the things but like common so sense I, he's oh, also oh, like oh, one oh, of the most you, I ask you for a serious. I ask you for a serious answer about why he's the worst president, and you quote a fictional TV show with yeah. a Veep who's just like Kamala Harris, and you tell me that that is the reason he can't be president, and he's a bad president, and Joe Biden is somehow better. Are you? Are no, you, I mean, look at his you, policies. Like you when you, you, you and Hunter you, Biden do are you together, the giant, the January sixth, like insurrection, he caused all of that. <laughs> like right now, the you mean the Supreme Court. Hang on. The Supreme Court, they're going after gay rights, they're going, after, they're going after black people, they're going after, yeah. yeah. You, you, are, you, are, you are like what they call a repeater. You're someone who's just <laughs> trying to the same shit. Do you remember January the 6th? Do you remember what happened at the end of the day on January the 6th? Guess what happened? What Joe, happened? Biden was sworn, Joe Biden was sworn in by the, the Congress and the Senate as the President of the United States. Yeah. Usually when you have an insurrection, yeah. it means you have you have a total rebellion. You have a complete chaotic scene. You can't swear in a president. If you do swear in the president, it's the one who's threatening everybody. That didn't happen. January the 6th ended with Joe Biden being sworn in by the, the, the Senate and by Mike Pence, his former opposition VP you mean, candidate. You mean, the guy you, tried, you, you mean the guy you tried to kill on that day? Is that the guy you're talking about? He tried, he tried to, to kill, kill Mike Trump, he told his supporters like and Mike Pence or whatever, like you know, because he, he said he was a, he was betraying. Do you know how many damages was done at the Capitol? I was at the Capitol like a year I ago. They're still you, like they're still you, like, you, are, you, so, you know what you remind me of? You remind me what? of these uh, friend, these friends of mine who live in places like Seattle or New yeah. York, yeah, or LA or Chicago, and you yeah. can't 
if you don't have the opinions that you've just parroted to me now, you actually can't have friends in those cities because it is so one dimensional. There is no diversity of thought whatsoever. You talk about having conservative friends. There are no conservative people in Chicago yeah. at all. That's why the Jesse Smollett hoax didn't work there because there are no people who support Donald Trump or the Republicans, or even a sensible, moderate Republican in a place like Chicago. Chicago it's is all a, Chicago is a super blue state. It's a Democrat, yeah. it's a liberal state. So that's where you're wrong. And also, a lot of things happened on January 6th. People died. You know that? Do you know that? It was like... Do you know, who, do you know yeah, who died? People, yeah. Can you tell us, tell us who died? Because this is interesting. You brought it a lot, up. A lot, a lot of law enforcement people died. People's life was at risk. The, a lot of who, senators, who, people... Even Mike how Pence. many people? What? Hold on. How, how many people died because of actual violence committed on January the sixth? Did you know one? Name. Did you there's know one the, Did you know what's the video? Did you not see white people going nuts at that building? What video are you watching? Which world are you in, Jared? Everybody saw this a, whole thing. Like, what are you watching? Fox News. Yeah, I'm, 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 asking, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not asking you for a whole bunch of ancillary unrelated shit. I'm not I'm having, asking no. You. Like it's who everybody. Is, everybody who, saw this no, thing. Everybody saw this thing. They they, they stormed the Capitol. You saw it. Everybody saw the thing. They stormed the Capitol. Everybody saw this thing. You, like everybody knew this. This was like barbaric. It was something that would happen in third world country. What was supposed to happen? People's lives were at stake when this happened. Like people Gatsby. died. Yeah. Gatsby. Like that was like the most mess. Gatsby. That was like calm, the worst thing. Calm, calm yourself down. You asked the question. Now I'm going to give you the answer, and you must listen yeah. to me, and you'll learn something. All right. The only person who died on that day was someone called Ashley Babbitt, who was an Air Force veteran who was shot by a Capitol Police officer. No other people died as a direct re result of violence on that day. Well, you Nobody. Were wrong. Well, you're wrong. There, there was, no, let me tell you. There was, there, was, there, was, there, was a, there was a police officer that shot himself in the head. A week after that happened, so I don't know if you, I don't oh, know what okay. news you're watching. Are you counting, you counting that as, you counting that as insurrection violence? Are you? Oh, I'm I'm sorry. If that guy was at Walmart the following day, he wouldn't have shot himself in the head. He was traumatized by that event. What are you talking about? That was a traumatizing event. You're, like, you're, yeah. you're talking about, you're talking about a guy called Brian Sicknick, who I, died I, a week, who died a week later when he killed himself. So yeah, let's be clear about as a result of that January 6th insurrection. So when you, there so were, let's go back to you. There were like, oh, oh, senate, there were like made, senators in their building, lawmakers I'm in their building that I'm were really... I'm taking you seriously. I'm taking you seriously as well. Like, you know, this is like, you know, we, we both like, you know, prior, uh, prior to coming on this interview, I was watching uh, Bill Maher interview and I was like, this guy reminds me of Garrett because you say things that you know, cause people to think about what they're thinking about. I'm like, this guy's an open-minded person. He wants people from this side and this other side to come. And let's talk about it deeply. Yeah, let's, let, we, we are talking about things that we know about. Let's like talk about uh, okay. things that really I, matter. I, like, you know, this is like a freedom okay. of- you brought, you brought it up. I'm, I'm talking to you about things you want to talk about. So let's okay. talk about it. You said, you said people died on January the 6th. I just gave you the two a names. A lot of, of two people people. died. On January 6th. Dude, a lot of people name were traumatized them. by events. You can't, them. you can't tell me how they died. You told me now that the only guy America who died... America has 550 million people himself. in the country. And you know, that, 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 that one event changed so many things. People brought news to the capital. You know what a news represented in America? That was used to We've see black change. people in America. Like, you know, this is there was some men... This is boring. You're even listening to me. Oh, okay. Like, I'm sorry you don't agree with me. I'm not. I'm, oh, I'm not agree with you. I'm sorry that's happening right about now. But, you know, I'm it's not about agreeing. Because... It's it's this, this, you 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 tell me a whole bunch of people died. I give you the two names of the people. The one who was a, a, a Trump supporter who died, who was killed by Capitol police officers. You just yeah. breeze past that and you go, no, no, no. But there was a dude who a week later shot himself because he was so traumatized. Do me a oh, favor. Oh, I'm that sorry. Was not, people, as, that was not as a result of the riots. What kind of you, uh, stupid... You know there's got to be a link of causation for a crime no, to have been committed? I, I, did I, think, study I, think, I think you don't even know what an insurrection means. To start with. Insurrection is when people take laws into their hand, storm the capital, take laws into their hand, and see that you know a lot of chaos and anarchy happen in a certain place. And that could cause like events that would really affect millions of people's I lives. Think I think I think we've lost Simpiwe. I think we've lost Simpiwe. So let's bring her back into the conversation. Otherwise, she's going to leave. 
Oh, oh, sorry, sit the way. Sorry about that. Do it in the care about it. No politics Fridays. I, I live by that. I, I live by it. <laughs> Just not on Fridays. But it is amazing to me. Like I've got a friend who who moved to Vancouver in Canada a while ago, right? Okay. And I've got a friend who moved to Dallas, Texas. And the guy who's in Dallas, Texas is he's he they both still brilliant and fantastic people who i love to pieces they were good friends of mine at university so we've known each other for 20 or more years okay funny thing is the guy who moved to vancouver his political opinions have done a 180 degree turn which is why i'm i'm, I'm bringing this up now because it gives context to what we were doing here um he's turned 180 degrees so now you just can't talk to him about stuff like you and i were just like you know, sort of banging up against each other instead of listening um, because it is very difficult to make friends or to live or to work in those cities that are so undiverse in terms of their opinions. And it seems to me like it's much, much worse in the blue states to find anyone with a different opinion. Whereas in the red states, you're still going to find like cities that are blue. Like in Texas, for example, Austin is a very blue city. Um, Houston is a very blue city. But the state of Texas usually votes Republican, so it's quite red. But it's diverse within Texas. That's not the case in places like Illinois, where you are. Chicago, blue city, blue state. If you have a red opinion, you've probably left already. And the only, the only uh, states in America that seem to have positive net immigration within the United States are places like Florida, Texas, Tennessee. These are red states. People are moving into the, the blue states. Nobody wants to be in them because they're so unidimensional. No, no, nobody in their right mind wants to move to Florida. Florida just banned books. But you <laughs> say the, that, but it's not the banned books. Yet. Florida is to the Gatsby. south. There's nothing in Florida except the, the, the weather that's Gatsby. really nice. There's nothing in Florida. Tennessee is to the south. There's nothing there. Watch out. That's the thing you mentioned in Texas. It's also in the south. There's nothing there. It's like a, mm. I, would, I wouldn't. Chicago is the third largest city in America behind New York and LA. And I've been to both cities, New York, LA, and Chicago. I live in Chicago right now. I've been living here over two years. And Chicago is like by far the most diverse city in America. The last two mayors of Chicago are both blacks in a, in a state where they're like the population of white people is more than 65%. So, you know, super diverse, super progressive. Illinois is the only state in America right now where you can legally have an abortion. Like the, the Trump person you, you are advocating for who, who appointed two Supreme Court justices, they went after gay rights in America. Right now, if, you have a, if you're a business owner, you have the choice not to do business with gay people. In America, the Supreme Court just ruled that. If you are in America right now, as a black person, through affirmative action, you can't go to a proper school like Harvard or whatever. Like they rule that out. Like, you know, there's so many things that the Supreme Court uh, judges have done. And because of <clears throat> Trump appointed two lawyers, he made those appointments. And they've ruined lives because of that. Like, you know, there's so many things happening. Chicago that you're talking about is super progressive. I don't know, maybe right wing is progressive to you. I don't know if, if it's not, it means something else to you. But yeah, I've been. Uh, Indiana is a super red state. I, I, I could. I lived there for like two months. I couldn't stay there. Super backward. Right. I, I think. Uh, I, I think. I think we've had a fun time. Thanks, Gatsby. Have an awesome weekend, dude. Bye bye. There we go. I can't do this conversation anymore. I'm not going to waste any time for you. We've got people in the comments saying this is going nowhere. I kind of agree. Might be my fault. I'm willing to take the blame, but that's dead. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We can move on. Uh, do you know, it's, it's like, honestly, some, sometimes I just feel like there isn't a conversation going on. Sometimes it isn't a conversation because someone has a point of view. And when you're talking about things like net migration between states and he goes, that's not true. And you're like, but here are the numbers and you can look these up by the way. I'm not making, this is not propaganda. I don't vote in the United States. I don't give a shit about the internal politics unless it's entertaining which it is to me, but he's just yeah. like citing complete nonsense. It's just nonsense. I can't, I can't have these uh, conversations with people anymore. It's just absolutely the impossible. So I had to end people. that. Sorry. Bye-bye Gatsby. 
is that um, so the issue with people is that people are listen to respond and not listen to listen to the point that is being made and then kind of be like, oh, this is where you're coming from. This is where I'm coming from. And let's see if we can find a middle ground to actually have a debate or a conversation that challenges each other's viewpoints. And it's very hard to do that when uh, people are uh, on polar opposite ends and it's kind of just you're here, he's here. And it's yo. Mm -hmm. I'm not even. I'm not even. I'm not even in the mood on a Friday to argue with anybody. But it's like there's uh, no fact needs to enter the conversation for some people. We're just gonna we're just gonna throw around our opinions. And if you don't agree with mine, it must be because you're just an idiot or you're a bad person. So I, I you can't have conversations like that. Anyway, I do think Simpiwe has far more important things to tell us. And one of those very important things she's going to tell us today is that you can get paid to poo. Now, do you remember <laughs> last week? I mean, we really go, we dig, we dig deep for the important subject on this show. So last week, last week, do you remember I introduced you to that Australian girl who goes to famous bathrooms across Australia? Yes. And she, yes. She's, a, she's, a, she's a very sweet sounding human being. She goes, hello, today I'm going to go and take a shit in the Melbourne Public Library. And that's what she does for YouTube and for TikTok and for Instagram. And then she's, she's got a lot of followers, right? And we even gave out her her handle so people could follow her. And she goes around reviewing bathrooms, which I think is a very, very niche thing, but she's got thousands of people who follow her. So it must be working. How can you tell me, Simpiwe, that there is a way to get paid to take a shit? <laughs> I blame you, first and foremost, Gareth, for bringing up that story. Because I think after that, th my, my algorithm was like, you want to hear more of this. You want to see this. So there's a site that you can go to. This is a true story, guys. This is not me just creating this thing. I was just as shocked. So there's a site. It's called, I think it's Human Mike. Um, org, and then what happens there is basically you apply to be a donor um, and there's certain things that you have to fill in there's a questionnaire there's a fitness test you have to send them a, a stool sample and if you get approved you can get paid up to two thousand us dollars like what i mean <laughs> <laughs> There's money, challenge for like you say, you maybe for, for a science experiment or something, and you you know for a week you have to do certain things, and but two thousand dollars, I mean that's that, forty thousand, that, that's forty thousand rand for uh, taking a shit. Yes, and you're gonna be helping, you know, um, with uh, the advancement of like, you know, chronic diseases and stuff like that. So you're still doing a good deed for humanity, but getting paid for taking, you know, the number two. And what's also fun that I recently learned, um, from Dr. Mark is that you could basically get into a routine or a schedule for your bowel movements because it's important for you to go to the toilet to do the number two, and so. You can, it's actually encouraged for you to be on a schedule where, you know, eight o'clock every day, that right. is me. I'm going to so, take a dump. <laughs> without, without getting gross about this, because, I mean, we already are levatorial enough on the show. But does Dr. Mark tell you you have to schedule? So you have to put it on your phone and then the alarm goes off. Oh, it's time for me to go and take a dump. Is that what he so says? He well, he encourages something like that. So uh, his partner has a thing when he wakes up in the morning, he gets a cup of coffee. There you go. You see, this All is right, so crazy, just, guys. Just put up, you can finish your Dr. Mark explanation in a second, but Simpio is not making this up. Uh, she said here uh, that, that she, she'd found this stool donor form, and here it is. Number one, complete the screening questionnaire. Number two, complete verification of stool type and physical fitness. Three, a video interview. Four, stool and blood testing paid for by us or the recipient. Get paid $500 per stool. If you're having a bowel movement every day, it can total $180,000 a year. A year. This is unbelievable. She's not making it up. There it is in black and white on the screen. Mm -hmm. oh, and you also okay. get like if you don't get accepted uh if you refer <laughs> someone else you can get paid for that referral so do a good deed guys just do a good deed like you know you're doing this anyway but back to what dr mark was saying is that 
it's actually really good for you to have like a routine. So his partner wakes up in the morning, has a cup of coffee, and then plays Candy Crush and goes to the toilet to do the number two. <laughs> Every morning. Every right. morning. And he's like, that's actually really good and that's really healthy. Yeah. So if you can get into a habit, um, and, and similar to you, Gareth, you don't have like a rule. You have a rule at your house. No, no one should take mm -hmm. a number two at your place. This is great because mm -hmm. if I have a schedule, I know eight o'clock every morning, I go to the restroom, you know, <laughs> get the number two out and I'm good for the day. <laughs> well, I do know people who especially incorporate uh, taking a dump at work into their schedule because it takes a little bit of time off their working day. And also they don't use toilet paper um, because they'd prefer to use the toilet paper at work. I mean, listen, some people put a lot of thought into this. Um, most of us just go with what our body tells us. If we don't need to, we don't. If we do, we do. But a lot of people think about this almost like it's a ritual. And maybe Dr. Mm -hmm. Mark's right. Maybe we all need to ritualize <laughs> taking a dump. <laughs> I, can't believe, I can't believe that we've gone from the sublime to the ridiculous in this. But I think that's a brilliant, brilliant discovery mm -hmm. of yours. Unbelievable. Yes. Simpu, you might have created uh, some new wealthy people just by telling them this. I know, right? Because I was like, you know, in this uh, Cyril's economy, we're always looking for side hustles. We're always looking like, how can I make an extra buck or two? And this one is so simple because you already do it. So get paid to just go and take a dump. Like, <laughs> yeah. All right, we're going to get to George in a moment or two. I know you've got a question or two for him as well. And um, I had a very nice coffee with George after the show last week. And we talked a whole, a whole, about a whole bunch of things, including his cold plunges. And George is now posting... Uh, more and more info and sharing more info about his cold plunges and all the rest of it. But we're not here to talk about that this morning. No, no. We have important automobile and lifestyle and car stuff to discuss with George. He's our man when it comes to all of this. He's also CEO of Auto Trader and he's no slouch. George Meany, did you do your cold plunge this morning? Uh, I did not, uh, Gareth. I don't do it every morning. I try to do it about three to four times a week. Um, so if I've got a, a bit of pressure, like uh, getting onto the Gareth Cliff show, then uh, then I fall guard. George, it's a very personal question, but Simpiwe tells us that scheduling your toilet habits is also important. Tell me that you are not scheduling those. No, you can't schedule your toilet habits. I, that, that's, like, <laughs> that's, uh, what, I'm that's quoting a doctor, guys. This is doctor, something doctor that. Mark. Dr. Mark encourages. So, you know, just if you want to be regular and healthy, just, you know, get into the habit. Pick a, schedule you know. How do you, how do you schedule a toilet habit? I mean, when my body says you got to go, you got to go. <laughs> maybe right. that's the problem. So maybe that's like first step is just going to the toilet and then forcing your body to kind of just do the things. I mean, like I, I drink, I drink protein shakes uh, uh, on a daily basis to supplement the protein because, you know, uh, um, you've, you've you've got to intake a certain amount of protein every day. Well, I mean, there's there's debate around that, but but nonetheless, uh, do you know what that stuff does to your body? You can't stop a toilet habit when you drink protein shake. Thanks. All right, uh, we've gone far too far down this rabbit hole, so let's move on to something a little bit more salubrious. <laughs> What have you got for us in the auto trader part this morning, George? <laughs> um, so, so the first thing is this um, uh, this R two um, uh, demerit system that uh, that the government has decided, or should I say, the Constitutional Court has ratified. Yes, we so, were very worried about this last week because Pumi's the one who brought it up, and I was like, "Oh, the only person I could trust on this one is George." So, what do you got for us? So um, the Constitutional Court has has ratified it, which means that it's going to happen. Um, you know, there's no there's no two fours about it. It's going to happen. So the best thing for us to do is to not try and you know the public have tried to uh, um, push this thing to one side. People have um, mm -hmm. have decided that uh, they don't want they don't want it in place. But once the Constitutional Court has ratified it, like it has now, and uh, and said that it is actually constitutional, um, there's really not much anybody can do about it. This thing is going to come into law and it's going to be implemented. So, uh, so, 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 understanding what it means for you is probably the best thing you can do, instead of trying so to just words, ignore it. Be clear, um, this is not going to be like e-tolls that we can just ignore. No, 
No, because uh, because it's it's a little bit different. This is a driving license, you know, something where a policeman can stop you on the side of the road and say, please produce your driver's license. And then they go and check on their system. And if you've got too many demerit points um, and your license has been suspended, they're going to take you off the road right there and then. It's not going to be a case of you can just walk away. They will arrest you. Um, so this is serious. It's not. It's not a. It's not a. It's not something you can ignore like etols. Drive past the gantry and wave. All right. So I mean, w- without getting into like a, a a full hour long discussion of what number of points you have and how many you lose when you do X, Y, or Z, because I can see Simpiwe's face as well. She's as concerned as I am. The last thing you need is for the the metro police to just take away your car or prevent you from driving for the rest of your life because of some point system. How's it going to work? So in a nutshell, without, as you say, getting into analysis by paralysis, in a nutshell, there, uh, there is um, a certain number of points, which happens to be 12, and they're looking to increase it to 15. Um, every time you have an infringement, that infringement will carry a certain number of points for the infringement, which will accumulate or be deducted from your 15, whichever way you want to you wanna look at it. There's a schedule of, 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 of points and how many, or should I say, of offenses and how many points that uh, those offenses carry. When you get to the threshold of 12 or 15, um, your, you, you, you will get your license suspended for three months. And in some instances, it's six months. And in some instances, it's nine months, depending on how far you go over that threshold in the first instance. If you do that three times, if you go over the threshold and get your license suspended three times, your license will be canceled. Oh, my God. What happens then, George? Then you can't drive a car. You can't drive a rental car. You can't drive your own car. You have to, what, rely on public transport, which we don't have in this country. How do they expect people to... I mean, I know you shouldn't break the rules in the first place. That's what they'll say. But there's no way back from this. Like, you can't get your points back. Or are, are there ways that you can redeem yourself if you've broken the rules? Well, it's it's a little bit unclear at the moment, but I suspect that it's going to be you were going to have to go and redo your license. <laughs> oy, oy, oy. All right, oh. well. Um, so, so, so it is serious. I'd, I'd watch this very carefully in terms of, and, and really understand it if, uh, you know, for all, for all drivers out there really understand it because, because you, you, you might not see it coming, you know, you might go through a speed camera and, uh, and, and, and there's demerit points, you know, that you, that you accumulate. Right. Well, I mean, that's all, that's all good and well, but we also know that with our government and our Metro police and our local law enforcement, implementation is three quarters of any of this. I mean, it's fine to have the rules, it's fine to have the system, it's fine to have the, 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 the technical backup, it's fine to have uh, a database. And, but people in this country get fake licenses, they, um, they, they drive without insurance, they do a whole lot of things they're not meant to do. And it's all about enforcement. Do you think that the police are going to be able to do this properly? Okay, so that's a whole different kettle of fish. You know, there's one thing, as you say, there's one thing um, making a law, there's another thing um, um, operating that law or or implementing that law. Um, We saw the same thing with smoking. How long has it taken for, or how long did it take for smokers not to smoke inside buildings? Initially, the law was implemented. People just ignored it. They um, mm. um, now a whole different, whole different thing. People don't do it anymore because because they passed on the responsibility to the owners of the properties. So right. the owners of the properties ha- uh, had to Im- enforce the law for uh, them. Can I guess? Can I guess what's going to happen? They'll make it part of the insurance situation. So and so then- that's. These, these fucking insurance companies who are all the most terrible people will start enforcing it for the police and you exactly. won't be able to get insurance for your car and they'll be the ones who are policing you. Like uh, that stupid, horrible Discovery Drive app that tells you you're braking too fast or whatever and they de- deduct points from you and they rate you and eventually you end up paying more or less based on your driving, which is, it's almost like a social credit system in some way. It, it's horrible. Yeah, so so that that's the point I was going to make. You, you, the, the 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 repercussions of a cancelled license or a suspended license is uh, is you go and try buy a car, you need a driver's mm-hmm. license. 
Right. Uh, try and fi- get finance, you need a driver's license. Try and get insurance, you need a driver's license. So all the corporate entities, that's the only way that the police and the government will be able to enforce this is pass the responsibility of, of, of governance onto the capitalist world. Sure. Well, um, I mean, here are a couple of very, very important points. Rickard says, if the government's going to do this, how will they enforce these laws in taxis? Because it'll take a taxi all of three days to rack up 15 points, maybe even three hours in some cases. And uh, Indy says, quite rightly, I put the, the comment up on the screen, more rules that will affect, that will affect law-abiding citizens. Criminals won't care, and they'll bribe and keep on driving regardless. So, yeah, I mean, this is going to be interesting to see. I, I think, you know, with what you've told us, everybody who's, um, who's, who's got their eyes open and their ears open is going to be paying very close attention to what happens next. You have to. And there's going to be the, there's going to be the criminal elements. There's going to be the ones that, uh, you know, get driver's licenses by paying for them. And, uh, you know, th- that's going to happen. Um, but, uh, but by and large, I think the average driver in South Africa is going to be impacted by this, uh, um, this demerit system in serious ways if, uh, if they don't take notice. All right. So, George, Simpiwe has got a question for you. Um, and, you know, we, we love to throw questions at you out of the blue because you usually can handle all of them. So, Simpiwe, you go ahead because I've thought about this myself a lot. Okay. So, this question is brought up because I saw a TikTok video of these guys actually doing this and I was like wait I didn't know that's a thing but how far can you travel on zero kilometer um because I saw the these guys they were like we're gonna travel and push the car the car was on zero kilometers and they were still able to drive and I was like how is that like what (laughs) <laughs> um, so, so that that depends from car to car. I know exactly what you're talking about. So, the sensor that senses how much fuel you have. You're talking about how much you can drive once your car says you've got zero mi- mileage left on your tank of fuel, right? Um, so, the sensor that that monitors how much fuel you got left in your car isn't 100% accurate. And the reason, one of the reasons, is is because fuel is liquid, and it squish, it's it sloshes around in your tank. So, so even if the, the, the prediction comes down to zero, it doesn't mean you have zero fuel in the tank. There could be a little bit of fuel left there. Um, they, there's fuel in the fuel lines. Um, you know, there's fuel in the system. So that could take you a couple of kilometers before you actually run out of fuel. Okay. And, and I learned something new. It'll also depend from car to car, but I mean, there's this um, there's a saying that you are running on the sniff of an oil rag. Um, essentially, that you know, even a little bit of fuel vapor could power your car for an extra couple of meters. But I mean, there's nothing more scary. I think the reason Simpu is asking this is also because uh, so many of us has had this, have had this situation where we don't even think about it. You get in the car, you drive, and you suddenly realize, oh my god, I've got no fuel left. Exactly. Exactly. Scary. All right. What else you got for us? Is that it? Well, no. I'm. Uh, um, I know we're out of time, but uh, let me re- run very quickly through the weekly trivia because uh, you know we're making a ah, habit of this. Good. Well, I was waiting for this. This is what I was looking for. So, who invented the inter- intermittent windshield wiper that is still used in vehicles today? Who invented hmm. the toughest one on the list? I don't know, George, and I wouldn't know where to start. I, I don't think many people will get this, Simpiwe. No, I have no, no Robert, idea. Robert Kearns is his name. He, he invented the intermittent windshield wiper. Here's an easier one. What kind of car is associated with James Bond? What is the brand of car? Uh, Aston Martin. Mm-hmm. That's correct. Um, what was the first foreign car company to enter America? Foreign. Not, not of America. That entered America. Foreign car company to enter America. First one. Sure. Toyota? I, no, is no, I think Toyota is part of I don't think it would have been Japan and Toyota America didn't have the greatest relationship up until quite recently. I would say maybe it was something from Europe and I would maybe go with Italian because eh, it's a it's, guess. It's a little, um, a little bit more mainstream than that. Um let's go with VW. Spot on. VW was the first car company to enter America for of foreign soil. I would, okay. People would have thought it's Toyota because of the size of Toyota, but Japan and America back in back in the day weren't friends. Hey, didn't um, you just 
interviewed the CEO of VW in South Africa, right? I saw it on yes, your yes. social media. Yes. We, we did indeed. We did indeed. What is the first, uh, sorry, what, what do people use, what did people use to indicate turning while driving before the invention of the turn signal? Believe it or not, that is exactly. It's, they stick their hand Taxi out of the window. Taxi drivers right? still do it. <laughs> yes. now, re remember, you can only stick your hand out of one side of the car. You can't reach, you know, it's I very know dangerous. To I know this. So if, you, if you're going to turn right, you stick out your, your arm straight like that. But if you're going to turn left, you just give it a 90-degree hook. Oh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, uh, uh, um, and, and people, a whole system of turn signals was developed, designed for one side of the car so that you could indicate which side you were turning to. And then very lastly, what, is, uh, what car was used in the 1985 film Back to the Future? Mm, a, a DeLorean. It was called DeLorean. a DeLorean. That's a DeLorean. Another, I'll never forget that movie. Oh, I loved that movie. Michael J. Fox and uh, what's the guy's name? Uh, Lee, something Lee, Christopher Lee or something like that. I can't remember. The DeLorean. But, yeah, what, a, what, what a great car. I mean, it's an ugly, ugly car, but I mean, great in that movie because it was a well, bloody if, time machine. If you compare that to the current Cybertruck, there's some similarities. They're also made of stainless steel. Fair enough. Fair enough. It does look a bit like the Cybertruck. I saw one of those on uh, social media the other day again. I'm like, what an ugly car. Only Elon Musk could have the balls to put something like that out in the market and actually sell one or two. And uh, pr production has started in Giga Texas of the Cybertruck. That's why it's all over the place. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, Simpiwe, enjoy your weekend of friends and uh, chilling. And George, I hope you've got some good weekend plans. Anything exciting that you're going to be driving, flying, or piloting? Um, so I'm, I'm probably going to go flying. My aircraft's um, authority to fly had expired. Um, so, uh, so that's all in place now. And, uh, and so I can go flying. I don't know if I'm going to, though, because this cold front causes serious turbulence. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, and so it's very uncomfortable, but, uh, I might just go crack a dawn tomorrow morning when the sun's rising, the air is nice and still. Nice. Uh, everybody have an awesome weekend. And if you have anything exciting happen, be sure to tell us about it on Monday morning. Also like subscribe, et cetera, et cetera. And be good. If you're not take photos, we'll catch up with you Monday AM six in the morning.